Don't it? The presence of the Lord is here. And in his presence, there is a liberty. So we're walking out here free, free, free today. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this time, we are going to make way for our next presentation, which will be from the high school, the principal of the Westwood High School, Mrs. Karen Francis. So let's cue up her profile as she comes on stage. Yes, make some noise, make some noise. <laughs> we realize that the enemy wanted to stop Westwood from being here, but them there, them there, them there, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have Miss Karen Francis's profile ready? If not, Tashima Drummond. If the audio is not ready, Tashina Drummond. Oh, it's coming up. Okay. Introduction for the lovely Miss Karen Francis. So Miss Karen Francis. A servant leader can be the term used to describe this teacher who committed her life to the Lord at the tender age of 13 years old. This commitment was made with the help of the ISC about Westwood High School and the teachings she received from her Methodist Sunday School classes. After graduating from Westwood High School, she attended the Brownstone Community College and the illustrious Shorted Teachers College for Ladies. She then returned to her alma mater as a teacher of Spanish for two years and then proceeded to the University of the West Indies to read for a bachelor's degree in Spanish and a minor in French and International Relations. She also has a master's in Educational Studies from the University of Sheffield. She returned to her alma mater and has been a member of staff since then, completing 27 years at the institution, 10 of which she has served as principal. Ms. Karen Francis also served other organizations in varying capacities. She is presently the Chief Commissioner of the Girl Guides Association of Jamaica. She has directed the Methodist Teen Camp for the last 15 years and serves on the General Purpose Committee of the Methodist Church. She is also one of the circuit stewards in the Beachonville Bensonton Circuit. Miss Francis has a passion for missions and has served on mission teams to Panama to the Hilltop Juvenile Correctional Center and feet on the ground missions of the Methodist Church. She enjoys a good laugh has a passion for souls, especially of young people, and as such has been integral in starting an annual campus crusade at Westwood High School. She's a disciplinarian and lives the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, with the knowledge found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, that she knows the plan that God has for her, to give her a hope and a future. I invite everyone to put your hands together and make welcome Miss Karen Francis.
Can you hear me? Good morning, everyone. I wondered who they were talking about just a while ago. But I want you to ensure that today is your day. All right, so girls, girls, who run the world? Yeah. Who run the world? Yeah. We apologize for that, man. <laughs> yes, today is your day, girls. Today is your day. It is by the grace of God that I stand here this morning. When I heard the choir from Merle Grove singing Excess Love, I had to exit the room because it is indeed excess love for me. I've been through two fires, but God has been good to us at Westwood. When Donnett asked me to speak, I said to her, I'm not sure. I have to hear from the Lord. And it took a little while as she almost chose somebody else. And then I said, yes. I will speak. And then I had a fire last week. And I said, but Lord, I can't do this this morning. But through God's excess love, I'm here. And I give him every praise. Every praise. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another beautiful day. One that we will never see again. We thank you, Lord God, for the conception of this conference to touch the hearts of girls, Lord God. Lord, we have men with us, and we are grateful for them. But today we focus on our girls, and we ask, Lord God, that through your Holy Spirit, their hearts will be touched. Lord, hearts will be healed Lord, restoration will take place. And Father, we give you all the praise because indeed you are the God of love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You would have just heard that I gave my life to the Lord when I was 13 years old. And that's a very long time ago. And it was through... ISCF that I made that commitment and it was fostered through my church as I attended Sunday school and youth group and to be honest with you you know the Sunday school teachings that you might be getting now as young people is probably far more in depth than I got when I was going to Sunday school but one thing I know my Sunday school teacher she never ended Sunday school without us singing Gee, um, God is love, you know, and that kept me because I know that it is through the love of God that I was saved. And I went through to college and university and was involved in UCCF. And I was a member of the executive at college and enjoyed attending UCCF rallies and gatherings like these and retreats. For me, these were activities that I looked forward to. And my ICF leader is very much here, Miss Lawson. Winnie, where are you? Raise your hand. Thank you. She actually brought me to my first camp because my parents didn't want me to go to camp. We enjoyed good, clean fun. And we had uh, opportunities to meet young people from different backgrounds. These activities kept me grounded. I still stayed connected with the movement. But, you know, the link was not so strong. As you enter the world of work, you find that you become so busy with the rigors of work, 
family, new friends, new goals, etc. That you neglect the one who first, who you first love. Busyness can crowd out time for opportunities to express our love to God and to our families. We can be caught up. So in my adult life, it has been a journey as there have been many times that I have been far from God, but I have always at the forefront kept in my mind that I must see God's face. This has kept me and given me the drive to continue loving, serving God, to continue reigniting the passion and reigniting his love for me. Young people, it's not easy. Girls, it's not easy. Because there are so many things there to distract you. But the secular song says, do it for the love, not for the likes. The love is what will last. Jesus Christ's love is what will last. I'll share briefly a portion of God's holy word from Revelations. And I don't want you to say, oh Lord, Revelations. Yeah? Just a reminder of how, of how we are to live. Ephesians, uh, Revelations chapter 2, reading from verse 2 to 6. Write this to the angel of the church to Ephesus. These are the words of the one who holds the seven, seven stars in, in his right hand. And walls among the even gold lamp stamps. I know that your works, your labor, and your endurance. I also know that you don't put up with those who are evil. You have tested those who they are apostles, but, but they are not. I'm sorry, let me just do that again. There's a little glare that I am not seeing. All right, let's go. You have tested those who say they are apostles, but they are not true. And you have found them to be liars. You have shown endurance and put up with a lot for my name's sake. And you haven't gotten tired. But I have this against you. You have let go of the first love you had. You had it first. So remember, the high point from which you have fallen, change your hearts and live and do the things you did at first. If you don't, I am coming to you. I will remove, remove your lampstand from the place if you don't change your hearts and lives. But you have this in your favor. You hate what the Nicolaitans are doing, which I also hate. If you, if you have ears, listen to the Spirit in saying to the churches, I will allow those who emerge victorious to eat from the tree of life, which is in God's paradise. This is the word of the Lord. The believers in Ephesus were doing all the right things, but their love for God was missing. They lost their first love. The foundation of the church was based on faith in Christ. However, 
over time, they drifted spiritually and they needed to be reminded to focus on Jesus and repent when necessary. Jesus spoke to John to call on the Ephesians to consider their actions and repent. All seven churches were given a promise, but the promise was dependent on how much each responded. Each church and individual is expected to act in a way that glorifies God. To determine to live by faith and in obedience to Christ. No matter what, at some point, a church or an individual can drift away from God. And we all know that because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm not here to judge anyone but myself by the word of God. In verses 2 to 3, John writes, I know your deeds. I know that you cannot tolerate. They started to focus on the hardships and the attacks and the everyday toils and, and so forth. Some of us as Christians, as young people, we do that too. We say, no, because we're not doing this, we can't serve God or, you know. So we're not doing this. But I believe if we love Jesus with all our hearts and love others as ourselves, one, we will avoid sin. Two, we will not forsake our first love, who is Jesus Christ. John wanted the believers to realize that the promise of God could still be theirs. That God loved them. And that they could once again return to their first love. This morning, the message is plain and simple. First, they needed to know and remember just how far they had fallen. Two, they needed to repent. Three, they needed to return to their first love. To do that, the believers needed to have ears to hear and a heart that responds and repents. Girls, God wants to fashion, refashion you, restore, and reignite love. Sometimes we spend so much time fighting the battles. And we forget about loving the one who died for us. You know, we say, oh, I am not pretty. Oh, I don't love myself. Oh, she don't like me. Oh, mommy hates me or prefers another one. But we forget the one who died for us. We forget about loving those who are hurting. So many people are hurting. We forget about loving one another. You know, as girls, we like to fight and cast mockery at each other. We forget about the fact that we were once that person living in rebellion to God. It's at times like this that we need to stop and listen for the voice of God and repent. Maybe you are feeling overwhelmed this morning. Maybe you are feeling alone. Maybe you are hating yourself and so you cut. Yeah? You want to kill yourself. Maybe you are harboring the wrong kind of love. Maybe you are so worried about family life. Maybe you are suffering from the reels of COVID and your mental health is not up there. Maybe 
you have focused on the battle and have not noticed that the love of God and the love for others is missing in your life. Maybe you have begun to realize that your love for God is not what it used to be. It's not that you do not love God, but you know your love for Jesus is not what it once was. Is there anybody? Don't answer. Don't put up your hand. Is there anybody like that? If you are answering any of these questions or any of these maybes, God wants to fashion and refashion you. He wants to create you in a relationship with him if you have not yet done so. Or if you once had a relationship with him, he wants to refashion you, to recreate you in his own image. He wants to restore you. Maybe you are damaged clay. You know the story of the potter and the clay. He can reshape you, mend you smooth out every bubble, and make you a perfect clay pot. He wants to reignite his love in you. Will you let him listen to the Holy Spirit? Take time to absorb his love and presence this morning. Don't focus on your friends. Take time to pray and to receive from God. Take time to be refreshed by the reading of the word. The Lord is speaking to you at this moment. You have a choice. Choose his love today. Choose to be an overcomer. Leave the fighting to him. Forget the battles. He said in Exodus, he will fight for us. Listen to the Holy Spirit and press in. The woman with the issue of blood just pressed and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she was healed. Your healing can come through just pressing. Choose to grow deep in his love. No foreign God can take his place. If you love him, no foreign God can take his place. Will you love him this morning? Will you allow him? Will you allow him to love you? Will you allow him to heal your hurts? Will you allow him to give you that forgiveness that you need? Today, is the day, girls. And they say that we are the weaker vessels. So your heart is not hard. It just needs to be in the right place with God this morning. And because of his excess love for you, you can, you will be what he wants you to be. Allow him to reignite his love in you and for you now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Did anybody receive that word just now? Miss Francis reminded us that God's promises for our lives still stands. 
And that even when we are broken, God never throws the clay away. And I'm a testimony of that truth today. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And me to tell you, but the promises of God still stands. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to invite Tashima to come and do the vote of thanks to Miss Francis. We need you back up here. Tashima, could you come and do the vote of thanks? To Miss Francis at this time. Can we just say hallelujah? Give God a shout of praise in the meantime. Look here at young people there, and I know young people vibrant, and oftentimes people say young people nice and nice. So what a nice they make me hear some nice in the presence of the Lord, no? That's more like it. That's more like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm doing something for real now. <laughs> okay, guys, so can I get some noise for Miss Karen again? <laughs> I think you can go louder than that, right? Come again. Ooh! Yes, yes, yes. So we just want to bless the Lord for Miss Karen Smith today and what she has brought to us today. I know that we will leave with something. I know that I will leave with something. Will you leave with something? Let me hear some noise. Yes, yeah, so we just want to bless the Lord for her today that she took the time out to come and speak to us and we could hear something from the Lord today. And we know that sometimes things happen to us and circumstances happen, but we want to do the will of the Lord. And we are so blessed that she took the time out today amidst the circumstances just to obey what the Lord has to say to us today. So we thank you once again, Miss Karen Francis, and the Lord bless you and keep you as you continue to be the principal of the great Westwood High School. <laughs> Hallelujah. So just some quick notes here for us as we get ready to move on to the next item. Passion and purity, and I hope we have it to be queued up. Passion and purity is a youth movement started in 2008 at Wilmers High School. Any Wilmers students in the house? All right. Official, officially registered as a non-profit charitable organization that operates in the context of school, churches, media, and communities. Has as its motto, finding your passion, embracing your purity. Believes that young people should not despise their youth, but be examples according to our theme text. 1 Timothy 4, 11 to 12 has hosted multiple church events such as rallies, camps, school high school forums, and several high school conferences across Jamaica, has over 20 passion and purity books. So we need to get some of those before we leave, right? Partners with several host churches and organizations such as Interschool Christian Fellowship and Christian Teachers in Action. Now you can connect, young people, we're all about connecting and liking and sharing. So you can connect with Passion and Purity on YouTube, Facebook, the Gram, that's Instagram, Twitter, and on our website, which should be posted on screen so you can see. All right, so at this time, we are going to be moving right into the next item, but I feel like I want some company on stage. I want some company on stage. I spy. Who do I spy? Green shirts, glasses. I need you on stage with me. Clapper, clapper, clapper.
Hi, my friend. You know, shy. <laughs> All right. So I need. All right. So I'm laying hands on you, right? And I want you to help me to introduce the next item. You think you can do that? Yeah, man, because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? All right, what's your name? All right, so my name is Cheyenne Davis. And which school do you represent, Cheyenne? Merle Grove High School. <laughs> all right, so Cheyenne Davis from Merle Grove, please do me the honors of introducing the next item. Somebody cheer her on, cheer her on, cheer her on. All right. So, our next item will be God Really Loves Us by PP Dancers. Make some noise.
What a savior, what a father he is. And as we saw the things being thrown off, that is what the love of God does for us. It, it, it looses us from the shackles and the weights and the burdens. It frees us from all of that. That's what the amazing, reckless, overwhelming love of God does for us. Hallelujah. We bless God for that presentation, that ministry just now. Uh, we want to make mention of the Teachers Forum, which is coming up shortly at 11 o'clock for teachers in the house. All right. Um, we would love for you to be a part of this forum. Jermaine, Jermaine, where are you? Jermaine, could you wait for us, please? This forum will be in class 11M, room 7, through there to my WhatsApp. Am I right? All right. Through the, down the corridor, you take the stairs up and then left. All right, class 11M, room 7. Hallelujah. Can anybody feel the love of God in this place this morning? Is anybody feeling the warm embrace of our Father in this place this morning? Oh my God, I'm feeling so overwhelmed of here. Just, just feeling this embrace in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So at this time, we are going to make welcome, we are going to make welcome the ministry of Alicia Taylor. Alicia Taylor, somebody make some noise for Alicia Taylor in the care of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Are we ready? Morning. Morning, ladies. Are you happy to be here? I'm so excited to be here. It's very nostalgic being back at Merle Grove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it feels like, mm, can I bring up the one here a little bit? It feels like old times in the auditorium where we have assembly and I had to be up here on a Monday and a Thursday leading worship and yeah and I, I just want to say this I think Merle Grove really prepared me for like the big stage you know because when you have to get up and sing in front of your peers 1500 girls and and not everybody saved you know what I'm saying it's not easy but Merle Grove High School prepared me you're in a good place you're in a very good place <laughs> Big up Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Ricketts, big up on yourselves. Yeah. You guys having a good time? Me and talk All right, you're rolling. Let us stand up. I want to go through. Yeah, man, I'm stand up and, and, and feel nice. How long are you going to sit down now? Yeah, good way, don't it? Yeah, man, shake it off a little bit. Oh, hallelujah. All right, so I'm just going to go through. This song, I used to sing it all the time when I was at school, and I know you guys know it. Before me going on my original song there, let us all, you know, big up the name of Jesus. So here we go. It's, the song says, Blessings and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. All right. From every nation, all of creation, Bow before the ancient of days. One more time, sing blessings, blessings and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. Oh, oh yeah, from every nation, all of creation. Bow before the ancient of days. Oh, 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 oh every tongue in heaven. Shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow to your throne in worship. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away. You say, Oh, hey, well, no, 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 no,
singing out, say, be unto the ancient of Ooh, oh, 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 yeah, from man. You say, we will bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow on your throne and worship you. Exalted, oh God, and your kingdom shall not pass away. Ancient of days, hey, ancient, tell him, ancient of days. Come on, say, ancient, hey, yeah. your kingdom, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. You say, that's right. For none can compare to your matchless works. Whoa, sing unto the ancient of days. Every tongue, say, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow on your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God. Whoa, and your kingdom shall not pass away. Oh, ancient of days. Oh, ancient of days. Oh, no, 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 Ancient, tell it. Ancient, one more time, say it. Ooh, oh, ancient, ancient, ancient of days. Make some noise for the Holy One, the Ancient One. Come on, make some noise for Jesus. The first and the last, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. I'm so excited every time I get a chance to worship God and you should too. Is that mama? Oh, mama, big up yourself, mama. Hallelujah. Sorry. God nice, you know. Ah, amen. So there's this song that I wrote. It's called Dear God. And I wrote it. Oh, too sweet. I wrote it um, after I did write one breakup letter to God. Anybody ever write like a breakup letter? Go and look on me like so. Never write one, but I'm sure you've had. Moving on. So I wrote a, a breakup letter to God, and I was just like, we're done. That's it. We're over. We're finished. Because you're not keeping up. You're not come true for me. I gave you my whole soul. I'm still there, so far, Lord. Like, what is going on? You know what I'm saying? So after I wrote the breakup letter and everything, but it kind of feel away. And so, yeah, I made feel away. Come in love with God, you know, bad. And so I wrote him this letter afterwards, it's like a whole letter. I made us I repent. I mean, I said, God, I'm so sorry. You can't you can sit down for that one here. Yeah. Come and no one really wants to sit down. You can't see the sit downness on the face. I got. So you run the, the first one. Let's see if I write one. I may hear the another one day. You have to hear the piano. Another one day, I next one. That one, yeah. All right. So I want you to listen to it. all around almost like we've lost you in the crowd but I know that you're hovering you want to come dear God it's so frustrating isn't it longing for that moment with your kids but we're so caught up doing other things but now I'm gonna let you be have your way inside of me 
and there's no other place to be than everywhere your spirit leads. Dear God, what are we doing every day? We lift our hands but hearts so far away. I think with you we've really done away. Dear God, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. I really thought you were my number one. All this time singing worship songs. But now I'm going to let you be my number one priority. And there's no other place to be. And everywhere your spirit leads Dear God, oh, why won't you lay your head down Dear God, said I promise you that my heart is your house Oh, oh forever starts now, dear And my heart is your house. Oh, oh, Lord, forever starts now. Dear God, oh, 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 oh. lay your head down. Whew. I'm so in love with the Lord. Anybody in love with Jesus? She's the best person to be in love with. God is so good. He's such a faithful God. got sick. I'll tell this story everywhere I go. He got sick. He was bleeding in his brain. And, the, you know, it wasn't good. Everybody thought that this was it. This was the end of it. And I remember I fell on my face and I was crying because I'm a favorite uncle. You know them with it? May I bow to God. I said, God, you're really going to do me like this? And he said, Alicia, you will live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. He made me that promise. And then I was buying soup for my uncle one day. My uncle was 51 at the time. And the ticket number that I got said 52. And I looked at it and God said, let this be a prophetic sign, Alicia, that your uncle will live to see 52 and beyond. Of course, being a tasty a ball. <laughs> and today, my uncle... I send selfie. I see my post for him status. I take picture and I go on. And I went to see him the other day and where I take picture. He's quite all right. He's in his right mind. He did his surgery. He's 100% okay. The goodness of God in the land of the living God. You are faithful. Hallelujah. I want you guys to sing this one with me because I know you know it. So, yeah. Just sing with me. You can the second one. You know. Just find a key there, because I know the band. The band is so good. Big up the band. Just find a key there. Because I know they know it. Tan, 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 tan. That one there. That's it. Praise the Lord. It says, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up on Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Come on, sing all my life Sing all my life you have been Nice. <laughs> and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice Come on, tell him you have led me through the fire 
in darkest times. Come on, say, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Hallelujah. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so Say of the goodness of God. This is my favorite part. Come on, sing with me. Say, Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you. Your goodness is running after, running after me. One more time, sing. Your goodness, your goodness, hey, running after, say, running after me. Oh Lord, yeah. Your goodness is running after, running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender. Love you guys. Oh Lord. Oh my life, you have been so, so, so good. I, every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Of the goodness of God. Let me tell somebody about the love of God, the goodness of God. When I was a heart rich and miss, the love of God ran after me. My father, pastor, but me a baby number one out of wedlock. And that wasn't enough. And I went and had baby number two out of wedlock. But the goodness of God, the goodness of God, it ran after me. When gunman hold me up, when man hold me up at gunpoint, rob me and rape me, and I felt like I no good. I felt like the scum of the earth as a real victim. The goodness of God, it run after me, it chased me down. Oh, I will see. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. We will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody thank God for his goodness. Somebody thank God for his goodness. Hallelujah. That was not on the program. That was not on the program. But I had to let somebody know that the goodness of God is real. 
It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. The goodness of God is real. And it continues to pursue you. All when may I try to get away from it. All when may I try to escape it. Mercy said no. Mercy said no. The goodness of God continues to chase after us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need to compose myself up in here. Hallelujah. All right. So back to the script. At this time, Alicia, we bless you for that ministry. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to have a panel discussion, conversations of the heart. Let us make welcome our panelist, Onila Taylor, Diane Hansen, Amanda Mighty Wilson, Jolette Grant, Josette Brown. We are in for a treat. We are in for a treat from this discussion. And just a reminder, that at 11 we have the teachers forum class 11 m room 7 Bless the Lord. Put your hands together and give God thanks. Wasn't that an awesome reminder of the goodness of God? Somebody shout goodness. Shout goodness. Hallelujah. We're having conversations this morning with five beautiful ladies. Put your hands together for them. We have Miss Onelia. Hallelujah. Onelia Taylor. She is one of the ministers from the Church of God of Prophecy in Otrius, St. Anne. Put your hands together for her. She loves the Lord and is passionate about teens. Then you have Mrs. Diane Hansen. She is, oh my God, she is the leader of the Feast of Esther's group in Jamaica. And she's also one of the um, presidents of MTM TV. MTM TV has carried our, our television program, programs for Passion and Beauty since 2008. And we give honor for MTM TV. Put your hands together for Mrs. Diane Hansen. Then we have uh, Miss Amanda Mighty. She is one of the executive members of Passion and Purity. And trust me, she wears many, many hats. These dancers that you see here, she is the one who um, guides them. She wears many hats in passion and purity. Then you have Mrs. Josette. Josette Brown. Yes, she is in charge of the youth from the Deliverance Evangelistic um, Center, um, Bishop Errol Blair Seniors Church. Put your hands together for them, for, for that church. That church is also a supporter of passion and purity. And she is also a vice principal. She is a vice principal of the Calabar High School. Put your hands together for her. And then you have Mrs. Juliet Grant. She is a co-pastor of um, Jamaica Evangelistic um, Center, um, Dr. Reverend Dr. V.T. Williams. And she is also a powerful minister, and she really loves the Lord. And so we're just going to have in, be having some conversations with them right now. Starting with Mrs. Mighty. Mrs. Mighty was the president of ISCF at Wilmers. Yes, and then she went on to be one of the, 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 the president, to be the president of UCCF um, at UTEC. Put your hands together for her. Hallelujah. She loves the Lord. And so we're going to be talking with her. A while we're going to say to her, Amanda, your question is, she's Miss, Mrs. Amanda, 
We're saying to her, Amanda, right, beginning of her question here. Why should young people get involved in SCFSU, ISCF, and UCCF, and Passion and Purity? All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What up? <laughs> Is it? Right? So why should um, young people get involved in SCFSU, ISCF, UCCF, all of the ministries connected, including Passion and Purity? Because you need fellowship and you need support, especially as young people, when you come into a relationship with Jesus, you can't do it by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. You need like-minded persons who also are excited about God. You need like-minded persons who, you know, they like to dance to the Jesus music like you. Because you're going to feel kind of out of place if, you know, you're just you one in the classroom and you don't have no friend where you're Christian. And you say, Lord, we just feel out of place, right? So it's important for support, for fellowship. It's important because it helps you to iron sharp, not iron, right? Yes, so sometimes you need, yes, you need community. And sometimes you might have something inside of you, a character trait that God wants to sharpen. And he uses your friends and your colleagues to sharpen that, right? So it's very, very important and it's very valuable. Helps to build your talent. Who here, you know, explore your talents through ISCF or UCCF or Passion and Purity? Who here say, yeah, yeah, right? So it helps to build your talents. And it's not just building your talents for now. It's things that God can use to shape Jamaica, to shape the world, right? So it's very, very important, right? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. This question is for Joseph, Mrs. Brown. What was one of your, challenge, your biggest challenge as a teen and how did you overcome it? All right. Good morning, everyone. I must start off by saying this is like coming home. I'm a Merle Grove old girl. Oh, and wow. I remember. Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> I remember my days in the auditorium at ISF and at Devotion. And Minister Juliet actually was one who used to come to ISF and just pour into us. Yes, back in the day. So I think. I would have to say for my question, what was my biggest challenge was understanding my self-worth as a person. And, uh, you know, when you're going through, you probably don't have the value system at home to pour into you in a particular way. And then there is this thing in our culture that people say we're shy and they allow it to grow and grow in a bad way. And sometimes, really and truly, that is masked, that is low self-esteem, masked as shyness. So I had to overcome those two. What did I do? I switched out. I'm going to be very practical, right? I'm not going to be like, oh, holy spiritual and whatever. I had to switch out some of those books that I was reading that was telling me all kinds of things that I should do and so and switch those out for books that told me about myself and how to grow. So I used to, well, I still read a lot of motivational books. I fell in love with reading the Bible. I didn't understand everything about it, but I would go into the stories and I would always pray and ask God, okay, show me beyond the storyline. What is this saying? And that helped me to grow. And I also had to challenge myself that, listen, every time something was telling me no, I had to sometimes say, self, sit down. Okay, and, and take a step and get out of my comfort zone. And it was hard, but I did it. And today I must say I'm a confident person because of Jesus Christ and what he has done in my life. Amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for, for her. All right, this one is a very, very, um, we get this question all the while. It's for Anelia. I have messed up sexually. Can I be pure again after I have messed up? If yes. How? Oh. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Let me hear all the beautiful young ladies make some noise. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I must say that as a young lady, I've been there. I've messed up sexually and I felt dirty. And it was the love of God that drew me back to him. When I felt like everybody else around me, even though they're not seeing what you're doing, 
when you go around Christian people and all of that, you feel like you're out of place. But we want you to know today that even if you have messed up, you have given yourself sexually to someone and broken that promise to the Lord then. You have given away that gift that the Lord said to keep until marriage. You are able to regain that pure feeling again by giving yourself back to the Lord. And for those who have not done so yet, giving your life to the Lord will cause you to feel purity. The Lord said he gives you beauty for ashes and that thing that you saw that is ugly. Because you know that sin is ugly and dirty, right? And so the Lord wants you to know that even when you sin and mess up, all you have to do, come to him with a pure heart. Mean it, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. And like Amanda said, find organizations like Passion and Purity who teach you to be pure and passionate about the Lord. And once you come with a sincere heart and you begin to live that life, you begin to feel that purity coming back. There's a song that says there's nothing too dirty that he cannot make worthy. He washes me in mercy and I am clean. The love of God and the word of God is able to make you clean and pure again. Amen. Yes, and that is so true. Um, some of you have friends online. You know, we're just coming out of a pandemic. And there are so many who said, send me the link. Because we're trying to break just being online and be face to face. You made it here. You braved it. Put your hands together and give God thanks for you. Yes, and one announcement we're asking the teachers for the teachers forum to be reminded that it begins now. And um, I think it's in room 11... 11, 10? All right. All right. No, this one is for Juliet. How can I love a parent that neglected me? How can I love a parent that neglected me? I will tell you that I've experienced that, um, not in the earlier part of my life, but in the, mm, maybe the 19, 20. Um, when I fell in love with this young man and um, my mother did not appreciate that happening and I went to just share my story and she did not receive it and she just shut me down but I kept on moving because I believe it was God and we're married now 31 years but, then, <laughs> yes. um, but I really felt that the, ne the, the, the ne neglect at that time because I wanted her I wanted her to be able to share my story. I wanted to talk with her about my experience, whatever problem I was facing. I wanted her to be able to share that with me. But I recognized that I had to look to God. I had to take my eyes off of her and turn my face towards the Lord. And David says that perfectly. I look to the ills from whence come at my help. So if you're, in a, if you're in a position right now where you feel neglected by your parents, the word of God says from Psalms chapter 27 and verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And so there is a God that is ready to take you up in those bitter moments where the neglect is real. It is real. It really feels tearing. You feel like you want to die because these are the person that you want to lock into. And you're not feeling their love and you're not feeling their care. And sometimes it is really difficult. But I can promise you, if you look to God, he will give you the help that you need to survive the pain that you're experiencing. The word of God says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Also, I want you to understand from 1 Corinthians 13 how important it is to be able to love those who are not lovable. God gives us the ability to love people who are not lovable. How are we going to do that? Is that we're going to find them. Say, God, help me find a friend. Pour out, share, get community and be able to lock into and say, I don't know how to survive this. My mother, my father not treating me well. And can you pray with me? Find people that will come into your space to help you to walk that difficult place. Because guess what? That God who walk you into that place want to use that situation to develop 
help you and allow you to become a giant and tell the devil, devil, I'm not backing down. I'm going to serve God. Even if my mother and my father don't like me, I'm going to still serve God because that is the most important person. God is the most important person. And so I challenge you today that in the midst of, you, of your neglect, of the wounds and the pain and the tears that you shed because somebody not loving you as, you sh as they should, I want you to find the love of Jesus because he's able to wrap you in his arms. He's able to carry you through those difficult places because he's God. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. And I know her husband, he's an he's a, um, awesome pastor today. Her steps were being ordered Amen. of the Lord. Thank God she kept the respect in there in spite of the neglect. Uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Hanson, what is one of the most challenging times you had as a teenager? All right. Morning! If you're a Jesus girl, let me hear you say amen. Amen! All right. So one of my challenging times growing up as a young lady is that my parents really didn't have it to give me some of the finest things in life. And I know some of you out there are the same thing. Your parents have struggled, you know, to put um, food on the table to make sure that you come to school and you look good and you smell good and you're getting a good education. And so that was one of my challenging, kind of feeling that boy, when my friends, them have the, the, the nice school bags and the lovely shoes, I couldn't afford it. My parents couldn't afford it. I mean, for those who grew up in the 80s and 90s. You remember barter crepe? Yes. Yeah, man, barter crepe is what I used to wear. And if the sun hot, Lord help you, because that heat used to come up through the crepe. But guess what happened? I learned to be contented. That is one of the things I learned. I learned that, boy, we all have our unique situation and circumstances. And so I learned to be contented. And so I... I really asked the Lord at that tender age for his help to be satisfied, to be contented. Because guess what happened? We see when we are not satisfied that we turn to the wrong source for help. Some of the men them out there, they are just predators waiting for you to come to beg a lunch money. And when, them, when you beg them something, they are going to come back to you and beg you back something. And what they are after is your purity. And this is about passion and purity. And let me tell the young girls, no, no man, no boy, or no girl, take away your purity. Remain Amen. in God. Learn to be just satisfied. Listen, if a half a bread your mother have, lift it up before God and tell him, thank you for it. And let me tell you something. So when you eat the half a piece of bread there, eh? just drink some water and know that you're going to get the nutrients. You know, know it's going to come from. But you're going to get the nutrients and the satisfaction. And I want to say to you again, to remain focused. Because again, that is where the passion comes when you remain focused. Remain focused on God. Because if you remain focused, you will take you through the path. He has done it for me. I could not afford certain things. When I finished high school at 16, I could not afford to go back to to college like some of my friends but I said God I know that my steps are ordered by you you say it in Psalm 139 verse 13 that the steps of a man are ordered by God and so I love the Lord well that is to order my steps he said we are fearfully and wonderfully made as a matter of fact in Psalm 139 and so because I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and my steps are ordered I allow him to order my steps and today I'm here to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen, amen. Ladies, you are getting much words of wisdom. And we, we only have five minutes, but I only want to hear from a few more. And just said, I, this young lady is saying, I really hate school. I have a passion for music. Why do I have to finish school? Why don't I just go and make it big out there and, and you know, record my music? Oh, boy. It is not... Um, well, that you asked me that question as an administrative, um, educational administrator, because these are conversations that I have with my students every day. Everybody wants to get big and miss I don't need school. And, you know, I have to say to them that school leaving certificate with your name on it is powerful. It's better to say I finished school than to say I am a high school dropout. And... You may not understand now why it is important, but even now, I have to be doing recommendations and references and pulling up school report 
for students who probably left 1990 something or so and it is painful when you look and see this person dropped out and you have to report that to the person who has sent for the recommendation it, it, it the opportunity goes by it doesn't it doesn't happen so it is very important to finish school whatever you are going to do if you want to pursue it on the side while you're in school but finish your high school it will not kill you so I encourage you all, finish school. It is extremely important wherever you are going in life. Thank you for that. Amanda, very quickly, why should girls wait until they're married before they have sexual intercourse? All right, all right. So question, why should you wait until they're married? Um, first question, the first answer to that for me is always because God commands it. God is a God of wisdom. He's a God of love. He knows what you need. He knows what we need individually and collectively. And if his word says I should wait, then I'm I need to trust that word. The word says to trust in the Lord. So I need to trust in the Lord, right? So the first thing is that God's word says it. And it's from, from God's word says it, it's set in stone, Amen. right? That is how it goes. Right? No matter what the world I tell you, no matter what the devil I lie to you say, that is how it go. Right? Um, and that is my first, first answer. My second answer is that if you, the word says that if you love God, you will obey his commands. So may I go back to number one, right? <laughs> right? So if you love God, then you're going to do what God says. It's like if you have a friend, right? And you tell them, I don't eat raspberries. It make me swell up. And every day they might bring raspberry come to you. Mm -hmm. Them like you? They probably want you to swell up and go to the hospital, right? So they likely don't like you. So if you love God, then you should obey his commandments, right? And the love of God is not burdensome. The love of God keeps you, keeps you in liberty, keeps you free. It keeps you free from stress and strain and baby drama and baby father drama and all of that, right? So God, God is looking out for you when he gives you that command. And God is not trying to keep sex from you, you know? God of your, your, if it is your, if it's God's will that you are married, then God have your man put on. Him of the man put on for you, right? So just wait, right? And trust me, from somebody, speaking from somebody who actually waited, listen guys, come in a little bit, come in closer, right? So when the wedding night come, and you say, God, I'm really married, I'm really married, I'm a do to it, guys, sweet. Let me say sweet. It's like you feel nice. It's like it nicer. It nicer because you say me do it. I me do it for please God. So it's like God said, my girl, you go on good enough. See it now, you know, right? So God wants you to enjoy life to its fullest. He doesn't want you to go and rush into things before time, and then it becomes burdensome, and it makes your life become dreary, right? So that's my answer. I don't know if anybody else. Wants. Amen. All right. Um, Anelia, guess what? Um, I want you to answer this question. Why should young people, they know the obvious answer, but why should they avoid getting into same sex relationships? God created a man for a woman and a woman for a man. That is, is designed within the context of the word. Anything else outside of that is wrong, illegal, and sinful. There's no sanction from God on that, that he's going to bless a man and a man raising a child, or a woman and a woman raising a child. It is a husband and a wife raising their kids as a family that is when god sanction it and call it blessed amen amen put your hands together for for that and that's true and in the age of a sexual revolution we have to stand on the word of god now diane speak to a young lady that is saying i don't have the courage to stand out from the crowd and i find myself always following the wrong set of friends because i want to be in the in crowd I want to say to our young ladies this, this, this morning, listen, own your uniqueness. We all are unique 
and we all have our unique situations and circumstances. Because if you don't own it, one person will come and tell you, say, boy, we need you to come over Yasa with me, and over Yasa might be a place of, of, of sin, you know, of, 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 of crime, of, of, you know, being envious and, and, and gluttful. So I'm saying to you, own your own uniqueness. We are all unique. And so I want to say to you as well that following the crowd 99% of the time lead you down the wrong path. And so you, you might say, but boy, it's easier said than done. And I want to encourage you to call on the strength of the Lord because only his strength is going to help you to understand that he has a path set for you, you know. When you watch, you see him both a running race. You mean a lane, in one lane and all the other contestants are in their separate lane. You don't see everybody each up in a one lane. You understand me? So stay in your lane. Ask the Lord for strength. Call upon him. He said, listen, you're not too young to call upon me. He said to remember the creator in the days of your youth. Now is the time to serve him. Call upon him. He said, if you call upon me, not we, I will answer and I will show you great and mighty, mighty things. You need the strength. You need the courage. You need the might of the Lord. And as our sister said, you can, you know, if you're in the wrong crowd and you're feeling, take time, take away yourself and find the right set of people. There are counselors. There are persons like Pastor Donnett and there are others who you can pull on and say, listen, I realize I'm drifting. Help me to be on the right path. Don't be afraid to ask for help from the right people because if you're running as somebody lane, it means that you're going to be disqualified. You're going to be disqualified. Amen. And God intended for us. He already set your part. Don't be afraid to be who you are. And this is when you be who you are and you walk in that path, you will experience victory and success. Good success at Amen. the end. Amen. We have our final question. And this is to Juliet. What was your biggest challenge as a teen and how did you overcome that? Okay, my biggest challenge as a teen was that my ear was, the back of my ear was roly roly, like black pepper. And my friends used to laugh at me and say, Juliet, your head back roly roly, sir. Mm -hmm. And every day I would go to school, they'd be at my roly roly head back. Them time it never cream, you know? And God, one day I went to home and shaved off every piece of ear around there. Yeah, I'm a nice. <laughs> And, and so that is very, very critical because some of you don't like some things about yourself. Yes. So I thought I was no good because they are no longer there. I went to school and my friend laughed me to scorn. Do you know idiot? Oh, you for shave off your head back. And I learned out of that situation that I cannot follow my friends. I have to learn to stand on my own. And so I want to challenge you. If, if your foot big... Like mine, because I wear a size 11. If I never tell you, you wouldn't know. And so sometimes the enemy tries to challenge you, the different aspects of who you are, wanting you to feel bad about yourself. Tell him, there are people worse than me. And so what if my foot big? It'll walk. You know, kind of get an attitude, because the devil just loves stressed people. So I want to challenge you, young people. Stay your focus, appreciate the fact that you have a nose, you have an eye, and even if the eye not turned the right way, it's still an eye. So just love yourself and appreciate yourself for what <laughs> God has given to you, because I eat that. God bless. Amen. Put your hands together for that. Now we have one more question that we need to answer, and I'm going to put that to Onelia. I was sexually molested as a child and raped. I feel dirty. I can say I was in that shoes with that young lady. I was sexually molested as a child, and I felt dirty. I felt like I wasn't worth anything. I was the worst person in the world. I, I felt scared around the opposite sex, because, I mean, they felt like my enemy. And I remember a particular day, I was at a camp, and I, I was just tired. I was tired, and I felt like, because I, I, after I, I was sexually molested, 
My mind was confused and I began to search for love everywhere. I remember this encounter I had at a, at a youth camp where the preacher was preaching, but I found myself be, being the only person in the room. And a man that was in pure white, he stood before me and he said, Anila, I love you. And I said, but I'm not worth loving. And he said, I love you. And he put out his hand and he gave me a hug. And I felt myself fell to the ground. But when I got up, I felt so clean. And I felt love for the first time in my life. I felt the love of God. And I can tell any young lady who has ever been there, being sexually abused, and you feel like, I'm nobody. God says he loves you, and he will restore that purity in you. His love will cover the multitude of any sin, any impurity, any dirtiness that you feel. He will give that back to you. He will restore it. And when you're ready for your husband, your husband will enjoy that which he has restored in you. Don't feel as if I'm nothing. God said, my love is all that matters. Amen. And that's all that you need to seek today. Amen. Can I ask a question? How old you were when, when, you, got, when you were molested? I was 13. And oh, it, and I was 13, 14, right up until I was 16. And what age you were when you got free? 17. Amen. Because sometimes we walk through these difficult places and it seems like it's never going to end. And so I want to challenge that if you're walking a difficult place because you have been affected, know that it is going to end. One day the Lord is going to bring you out. Whatever it is that you're facing um, and, and it feels hard, keep crying, keep bawling, keep talking to people, but you're going to come out. Amen? Amen. Hold up your hand right now that you're going through that. You're saying, I'm Hallelujah. coming out. Mm. Say that I'm coming out. Amen. Devil, I don't know when I'm going to come out, but I'm, going, I'm coming out. Amen. I'm coming out in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. This has been so empowering. Do you feel the love of God? Do you feel the love of God? Put your hands together for these ladies who came and shared with you. Hallelujah. I just heard your song in my heart, but um, wow, wow, wow. I heard your song in my heart. We are going to, I'm going to just take oversight, right? And then I'm going to ask Sister Juliet to sing that song that she would sing in the concert section. Hallelujah. Musicians come. She's going to sing that song and then we're going to flow on. Hallelujah. 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 My and Lord, with Jesus, I will make it. I did this song in 1999 and I started singing this song like a weary traveler. But in 2017, I hear the Lord said, Juliet, you're not weary no more. So I start singing like a mighty warrior. And so we want to challenge you young people. I got, I got saved when I was 14 years old. And I will tell you that I've been kept by the living God. Today I stand as a 58-year-old woman. Because of Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you, stay the course. Hallelujah. Like a mighty warrior in this world, I'm passing through. On my journey, my downs are many, and my ups are only a few. I've been up on the mountain top, and I've been down in the valley too. This road I travel is not an easy one, but by faith I'm moving along. For with Jesus I'm making, I know my needs will supply. And though I be cast down in pain and shame, children 
morning you're gonna make it I know you're gonna make it because I'm I'm right by your side mm, on my journey the force before me and is trying to block me with fear the way it's hard and rocky and it seems my life's end is near then i remember those hebrew boys in the fire he did not let them die and i'm so sure jesus walks with me so neither It. Do you believe it? I know my needs is supply. And though I be cast down in so much pain and so much shame, and this world seems to pass me by. But that's when Jesus lifts me. Because I'm right by your side He says, my child, you're gonna make it Just turn to somebody beside you And tell them you're gonna make it Turn to somebody and tell them you're gonna make it you might be going through a difficult time right now, but you're going to make it. Give them a big, broad smile and tell them you're going to make it. You're going to make it. The devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. You're going to make it. I'm making it today because of Jesus Christ. There are times in my Christian, in my Christian walk when I wanted to backslide. When I wanted to walk away from God. But the love of God held me captive. And I'm so eternally grateful for the keeping hand of God. And so I challenge you today, young people, that if Jesus could keep Julian Grant, he's the same God. He's the same God. Come on, he's the same God. Hallelujah. He is the same God, young people. He says, my child, you're going to make it. Because I'm right by your side. God bless you. it because God is right by your side. What an amazing God he is. We have been encouraged young people by our awesome panelists to wait. Wait. But if like me you never did wait, God is able to restore you. It's not over for you. All hope is not lost. We were also reminded that even when your parents forsake you, then God will lift you up. We were also encouraged to be content in our situations and to stay in our lanes. 
we were also reminded of the importance of self-love. And lastly, we were encouraged that even if you have experienced sexual molestation, that does not define who you are. God is able to make you clean. He is able to make you pure. Can we just give a shout of praise at this time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank our panelists once more. And at this time, we are going to do a quick roll call because we want to acknowledge the schools that are represented here. So when you hear your school, I want you to make some noise, all right? Make some noise when you hear the name of your school. So let's do this quick and fast. Troy High School. All right, we see you, we see you. St. Catherine High School. All right. St. Andrew Technical High School. Yeah. Woolmers High School for girls. On the day, on the day, on the day. Holy Childhood High School. Holy Childhood, I see your name here, so it means you are here. All right, here we go, here we go. Merle Grove High School. Then there, then there. All right, University of the West Indies. I'm a past you with students, so I'm going to make some noise. Woo! All right, Norman Manley High School, where are you? Where are you? All right, keeping it moving, Westwood High School in the building, Immaculate Conception. Hi, where are you at? Where are you at? Hope Valley, Hope Valley. We also have St. George's High School. Can we hear you? Charlie Smith High representing. We also have in the house St. Hughes High. Also Sligoville All Age. Michael practicing. Yes, yes. Shortwood Teachers College. Hill Primary. I've never heard of this one. Hill Primary. Mona Heights Primary. Mona High School. It's a girls' conference, but we have Woolmer's boys. <laughs> and we have Math Unlimited represented. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So guess what we're saying? We're saying that you have come from so many different schools and we're believing that you're going to go back into those schools and you are going to blaze a trail of excellence. You're going to take the fire that is in this place today and you're going to bring it to your schools. You're going to bring it to your homes and families and you're going to bring it into your communities, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the young people say, what up? Awesome, awesome. All right, all right. Just a reminder for all teachers in the house that the teachers forum is going on now. There is Jermaine right there. We invite you to go over to the teachers forum. So if you are a teacher, please go with Jermaine to that forum. All right, we are going to keep it moving. And at this time, we are going to have Mrs. Jacqueline Smith. And guess what? She is the sister of the principal of this school, Mrs. Ricketts. So if she's anything like Mrs. Ricketts, we are in for a treat. So let's cue up her profile. We can have that on screen as Miss. Where is she? Mrs. Jacqueline Smith, as she makes her way to the podium. Remember to be taking those selfies. Remember to be hashtagging girl and purity. Remember those selfies. Remember those selfies. All right, the selfies. This is how we do it. All right, are we ready with our profile? It is Ecclesiastics 12 verse 1 that encourages us to serve God in the days of our youth. 
and encouragement embraced by this passionate woman of God, who dedicated her life to the Lord from her early teen years. Her name? Mrs. Jacqueline Smith. Mrs. Smith's early decisions to find her passion guided the trajectory of her life and influenced her educational journey and her choice of specialized studies. She is now a graduate of Whole Life Ministry Bible School and the Bible Training Institute of the Church of God of Prophecy and also a graduate of the College of Arts, Science and Technology, now University of Technology, at Vocational Development Training Institute, VDTI. Mrs. Jacqueline Smith is also a certified member of Sarasota Academy of Christian Counseling, certified creation therapist and Christian life coach at the Sarasota Academy of Christian Counseling, member of Fresh Bread Ministries International and the president of Women's Ministry, Fresh Bread Ministries International. She has dedicated 29 years to working in the education sector and is a trained teacher. She is an administrator of our reading program at the early childhood level and is author of the book, It's Okay Mom. Mrs. Smith celebrates 27 years of marriage and is a mother of three lovely children. With a round of applause, I invite everyone and make welcome Mrs. Jacqueline Smith. We're in the house. We're in the house. So we're in the house. Amen, amen, amen. When I'm around youth, I get young. So you can't make me outdo you in being a youth. So let's see you say, what up? Yo, my children would say, mommy, don't do that. But them is all right. Mommy, have to look around that too. Like, you know, remember the day when I was saying, like I was hot, and I say, deuces. And I say, mommy, what you say? Deuces. And I saw, anyhow. Are we happy to be here this morning? Are we glad we are in passion and purity? Are we happy to be embracing our purity while pursuing our passion? You know, I listened to a lot of things said this morning. And I'm like, so I'm in need for bad talk. What I need to do is come up here and give an altar call. We ready for the altar call? No, I'm going to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart for all of us this morning. You know, as we sit and we hear a lot of things being said, and as young people, we say, how come? How am I going to do this? Every person who sits here and is over 18 was also six. Every person who sits here and is over 20 was also 15. And as the scripture said, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common. And so we are here this morning just to encourage you that the same God who did it then is the same God who will do it today. So did we mess up? Yeah. God cleaned me up? Yeah. So you mess up? Yeah. Can God clean you up? Yeah. The answer to all of this is yes and amen. And so I'm going to ask some questions. And if you can identify with any of these questions, just say yes. Because we're going somewhere. And I'm going to be extremely short. I've got a couple of minutes. And I want to see if I can do it in that time or less. Now, do you love music, the arts? Do you love to tell jokes? I never ask if you're good at it. So let me ask again. Do you love to tell jokes? Yeah. Right. Do you know to do something that you are very good at, that you could teach somebody else? Yeah. All right. If you could be a sound, I want one person to just put at them and shout out. If you could be a sound, what sound would it be? <laughs> 
That's a sound. What other sound? Ouch. Right? Yeah. If you could be an animal, which animal would you be? A lion? A rat? A who? A rabbit. Okay. And the last question. Just think on this one. If you could change the world, what would you do? Just think on that. If you could change the world, what would you do? Now, we answer the questions with a lot of yes, and we are still pondering, what would I do if I had the ability to change the world? These answers tells us what it is that we are passionate about what it is that I like to do. So if I would say, ouch, you know what it says? I can feel pain. And because I can feel pain, I can identify with your pain. When we say hallelujah, it means I love to praise. And so I'm going to join up the praise team at church. I'm going to lead people into worship because that's who I am. So these questions help us to identify what it is that God would have put inside of us so that we can help our world and by and large change our world. We are called world changers for a reason, you know, because the Lord created a perfect world. But we know that sin came in, messed up the perfect order, but God. And so we want to talk about the but God this morning. Now, as it was said in, in the profile, I accepted the Lord at a very early age, your age. I grew up in church. The truth is, I never really know none else but church. So I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday choir practice, Wednesday ABM, Thursday's youth, Friday's choir practice, and Saturday we meet for go out on the street meeting. So for the whole week, we go to school and church. But you know you can't sit down in a church and not be churched. And so I sat in church and wanted to be a raster. Yeah. And I wanted to be a raster because I thought it was cool. You know, Rasta just says Zane. And them just say I and I. And them are well I made. You know, them just say well I made. And them just easy like Sunday morning. Three little birds. I sing. And so I thought that that was just cool. And so I was pursuing something that was unwholesome but God. Did I say but God? Say but God. But God. And so, one night, Sister Donnett wouldn't know what we're talking about. I went to a parish convention. And we know when we go to convention, Sister Donnett, it's not really to hear the convention I go on with. And for me, it will friend them from out of town. I will friend them when we go to another church. But that Saturday night, I found myself in the fifth row, which is where I don't sit. I sit at the back. And as I sat in that fifth row, me hear one hell message. Anybody ever hear a hell message yet? A message where you hear to the fire lick on your foot and how you went burn forever? I heard that. And what caused me to accept the Lord that night was fear. Fear. I was afraid of hell's fire. And I, as I grew in Christ, I realized, no. That's not a good enough reason to accept God. And so my life changed when I realized that he loves me. When I realized that out of his love for me, he died. Out of his love for me, he gave up his royalty. Out of his love for me, he took on humanity. Out of his love for me, he shed who he was to become who he needed to be so he could capture me. I said, I must serve him out of love for him. And then I started saying, Lord, how do I serve you out of love? What does that look like? And he said, it looks like serving others. 
it looks like being there for others. No longer about ourselves. And I start telling him all the things that I did wrong. Because as much as you're in church, we were born in sin. Shaped in iniquity. Anybody here ever tell a baby to tell a lie? You ever see a little three-year-old just stand up in front of you and tell a lie? And nobody not tell him to lie, you know. You know why he lies? Sin. So that's where we were all born. But God. It's about God. And so God, I, I saw that. And I said, God, I'm going to serve. And so I did all of them studies the way I hear about. And all I wanted to do was to be in a quiet little place and do my thing and hope that somebody would come by and hear. Girls and some of the boys that are here, I want to let you know that when you give yourself to the Lord, it takes you serious. So as I moved on and I started doing in church and doing things, I remember one day, kind of feel like, you know them say when your body call? Anybody know when your body call? Stop going so. Stop going like you don't know what I talk about. If you know what I talk about, say yeah. Say yeah. Right? And as I felt like that, I said, Lord, I don't need this, you know. You know, I don't need this because this is a distraction. Because I'm not married. I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't even have a boyfriend. So what may I do with this? If it distract me from doing what you called me to do. And I went to the Lord. And I'm telling you young people, you can't do it. God, take you serious. I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, take this away. Take away this desire. I don't need it. It's a distraction and I have work to do for you. God here. And he answered. Not only did he hear me, he answered. If you don't think you can deal with it, go to him and ask him to take it away from you. He took it. And then I got married years later. You know what I had to do? Who think they know what I had to do? I had to go back to him. And ask him, forgive me back. That is how serious God is about the prayers and the desires of our hearts. And if you decide to pursue him with passion and to maintain your purity, commit, commit your life to him, give it over to him. When you are ready, he will give it back to you. And you will live a fulfilled life purposeful life. You'll be able to stand in front of young people and say, but God. But God. If you mess up, what you going to do? Run to him same way. Me mess up. What you going to do for me, Father? Before you and I ever came into being, Jesus said to him, Father, Daddy, they mess up. I will go and I will die for them. I will redeem them and bring them back to you. And he did that. So don't matter the position. So if you don't mess up yet, do. Give to him if you can't manage it. And if you have messed up, run to him and say, I surrender. I repent. Have your way in me. That's the God we are talking about this morning. The God who you can give all your cares, your anxiety, your fears, everything to him. And know without a shadow of a doubt. That he is faithful who has begun a good work in you. When God calls you, he's able to keep you. Have you ever heard him whistling after you? Come home, my child. Listen to me. Hear me. Don't go down there. Don't go over there. Walk right here so. Because he loves you. He's not a cramp your style. He's not, God is not a, a style cramper, you know. God is not a style cramper. He loves when his children laugh. Do you know that God laughs? The Bible says he sits in the heaven and he laughs. Where am I laughing? I'm going to really read a part there. But the part where me just stop at is that God laughs. And if God laughs, it means that he doesn't have a problem with me laughing. He doesn't have a problem with me having fun. But he says, maintain your purity. Walk in integrity. What would you do? If your mother come in here now, 
Can you still keep on doing what you are doing while she's standing over you? If your father come, can you still keep on doing it? Or you have to go run, go hide? You walk as if you are always being watched by your parents. Because you know why? The all-seeing eyes of God is watching you. And he's not watching you to whip you. He's watching you to call you unto himself. Can we just surrender ourselves to him this morning? Can we just say, Lord, have your way in my life because you are a faithful God. You are my father. This morning as the song was being done, he's running after me. I just started reflecting on the goodness of God. The goodness of God who saw me wanted to take another path. But say, uh-uh, uh-uh, I have a work for you to do. He's saying the very same thing to each and every one of you young ladies and gentlemen sitting here this morning. He's saying to you, I have a work for you. Will you come back to him? Will you run to him and let him have his way in your life? God bless you. That was a word, that was a word, that was a word. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that, Mrs. Smith. At this time, we are going to invite to do the vote of thanks, Michaela. Mika <laughs> Take your time. All right, so Michaela Wong will do the vote of thanks and presentation to Mrs. Smith. Good day, everyone. So we just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to come speak to us about how, but God, but God, you couldn't mess up, but God. So I present this to you. But God, but God, but God. Hallelujah. All right, so I want to put someone else on the spot because I'm kind of like that, you know. Um, so I'm going to spy out the room again. Let me see. So I was over here the last time, yes? And because green is one of my favorite colors... Yes, beside the young girl with the phone. Yes, yes, you, yes, you. Come join me up here. Cheer her on, cheer her on. Hi. <laughs> she have a vibe like her. <laughs> All right, so would you please tell us your name and the school that you represent? My name is Janelia Palmer, and I am from the Mall Grove High School. Another one, another one. <laughs> All right, so Janelia, here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to introduce the next ministry, the next item on the program. You think you can do that? I know you can, right? All right, so go on right ahead. Here is the next item. Do you think, girl? Yes. All right, all right. So let me make some hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. As just keep the praise. Keep the praise. And we are about to announce the next ministry in song by Sir Karen Ennis. So make him feel welcome as he come. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, hallelujah. It's a lady, so make her feel welcome. Keep the applause going. Keep the applause going. Hallelujah. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, ladies. God is good. And all the time, come on, do better than that. God is good. And all the time, it's such a blessing to be home. Can I hear my Mulgrove sisters make some noise? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God is indeed wonderful. I'm so blessed to be here another year at this Passion and Purity Conference. This is my home. This is my, my project. This is my movement. Auntie Donnett, Dr. Norman, God bless you. God bless you for what you're doing in this island. I came here and I saw the team reigniting the love and I started to talk to God. I said, God, what is it that you want me to go to Merle Grove for? What's my assignment at Merle Grove? I don't just want to come and jump up and you feel good and then you go do something else. I want to come and to let you know that God says that he loves you with an everlasting love. Anybody believe that God loves them? Anybody believe that God really loves them? Anybody want to get close to God? Anybody just want to be so close to God? I don't know about you. When I was younger, take it down a little bit. When I was younger and when I was in high school, my prayer would be, Lord, hold me so close till I feel your heart beat. Don't let me wander away. And that's still my prayer. I want to be so close. Right now, when you look in schools and you see all oh, that's happening, you see the enemy have him on in it, right? But because we know that we serve a God who is alive, a God that is not dead, a God that is faithful, a God that is promising, we can come to a conference like this and get to know him some more. Amen? Amen. I want everybody to just stand on their feet right now. I want you to look at the person next to you. Look at your neighbor and tell them for the next few minutes, don't distract me. No man, tell him with a little bit more attitude. For the next few minutes, do not distract me. Yeah, nobody must distract you right now. It's between you and God. I want you to lift your hands up towards the heaven. Come on, girls. Lift your hands up and just begin to worship him. In your own way, just say something. Something to him. Something. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how marvelous he is. To reignite the love, you have to go in his presence. You have to have that relationship with God for yourself. Come on. I see somebody talking in somebody's ears. The person just said, don't distract me. Focus upon God today. Come on, tell him something. He is wonderful. He is worthy. He is holy. He is God all by himself. Come on, lift your hands and wave it in his presence. Yes, the world. Would bow down and say you are God Every man Would bow down and say you are king Come on, sing to him today Come on So let's start right now Why would we wait King Come on, sing to him. I just want to be with you. Oh, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. And we'll sing hallelujah. Until you come again Come on, sing to him, sing to him, come on And we'll dance in your presence Until you come again hey. Yes, Lord, we will sing hallelujah Until you come again It's all about you, Jesus, tell him And we'll dance in your presence Tell you come again. Hey, we will sing, say. we will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Tell them we'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, King of just 
just want to be with you. Tell him, I just want to be with you. Come on, ladies, let me hear you sing it to him this morning. Tell him, say, King. Just want to be Jesus, just want to be with you. He loves us, oh how he loves us, oh how he loves us, oh how he loves us. Come on, lift your hands and tell him, say, he loves Put your hand on yourself and say, He loves me. Oh, how He loves me. Oh, how He loves me. Oh, how He loves. Come on, somebody tell him, say, He loves. So we pour out a praise to you, holy God. Great are you, Lord. It's between you and him right now. Come on, tell him. Great are you, Lord. Tell him. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. Come on, say. It's your breath in my life. So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise, it's your grace, God in my lungs, yeah. So we pour out a praise to you, oh, say, it's your breath, Jesus, in my lungs, so we pour out. So we pour out a praise to you, holy God. Great are you, Lord. Woo! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord Jesus. Great. And just begin to shout some praises in the atmosphere. Come on, shout some praises to the most high God. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him honor. Give him praise for he deserves it. Give him worship, he deserves it. Give him honor, he deserves it. Oh, we bless your name.
the Holy Spirit telling me right now there are some young ladies here you're so hungry for God it's like you're saying God I want to get so close to you I want to know you for myself I just want to be so intimate with you I want to know what it is like to hear you for myself I hear God says all those hungry young ladies run to the altar he wants to fill your cup today he wants to give you what your heart desires don't be afraid because your friend is sitting beside you if you want to know God for yourself it's between you and God God says I'm here to meet you at your need today I'm here to take you to another level I'm here to do the impossible in your life oh God when you come to God in his presence don't come and look at me look at him lift your hands and just begin to tell him what you desire look at him and tell him what you need from him in the season oh I need more I need more I need more I need more of your presence God I need more of your presence Lord I need more of your presence Lord I need more The lowest hell, the guilty pain, bowed down with shame, and the race of Asha. Nanga gave his son, he gave his son to win, and the other of Asha is a This is the moment. This is the moment. Jesus. Oh, love of God. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Our champion, yes, God. in this place right now. You know, we, we, we sometimes we get afraid of, if you're like me when I was 15 years old and going to church, I got a little scared when I heard about Holy Ghost. I heard about spirits. But this spirit of love which is God, there's no need to be afraid of Him. His love has come to heal this morning. His love is here to deliver. And as our sister began to minister, and she said, let it be between you and God, something happened in this place. I want you to go down a little bit. The Spirit of God began to minister to us about some of you young ladies that will be coming to this conference. Some of you, you're not struggling with sin. You're not struggling with doing foolishness. You are just full of a love for God and a passion for God. And you're saying, God, I'm coming to this conference to hear my purpose in you. Hallelujah. Somebody need to worship God right there. For young people, a generation that is seeking the face of God. I know every young people want the foolishness. Come on, somebody. And there are some young people here that are saying, God, I want to find my passion. I want you to open my spiritual ears. I want you to open my spiritual eyes. I want to see my purpose on earth because there are voices that are telling me that I'm here to waste time, that I'm a waste man, that there is nothing good about me. I want to receive your direct love like how Sister O'Neill shared earlier. Abused and in church. And she saw this man in white come up to her and said, O'Neill, I love you. I'm telling you, the love of God can break every fetter. It can break every chain. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we agree right now for every young person that say, God, I want to choose the career that you want for my life. I want you to show me who to marry. Glory to God. Take this one down. I, I, um, I want to, I want to, I know we are on an altar call, but as, as I was standing there, I almost stopped the sister from singing because God spoke very clearly to me. Someone, I'm not sure if they are online, it's a female, you are online or you're in this audience. There's a male that has been approaching you and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this may love God more than you. And you started to feel a little uncomfortable. God said, that's your spouse. You want a spouse that love you more than, more than, love God more than you. I just wanted to say that for somebody who God spoke to. But God says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. How the devil has shaped our young ladies is to make yourself the center of attraction and take the men's attention off of God. 
But let me tell you something. Don't make yourself an idol. I want you to know that God is the one that we should love among, above everyone else. And today, those young ladies who are here, those persons who are here are saying, God, I want my life to count. I want you to anoint my life. I just met a young lady outside. She's from, she used to attend Clan Carty High School. She's no longer so young like your age. She's now in um, investigatory work. She's social work. She's, she told me about three or four different things that she's doing right now. And she brought two young ladies with her because she said she remembered when she was in high school like you and what passion and purity did in her life. And she's, she's, now, she's now bringing other young ladies to, to what God has done in, your, in her life. Let me tell you something. The Spirit of God is here and He's refining your purpose. I want you to know God is directing your steps. He let you know which subjects to, to take on. Another young lady from, from St. Hilda's, I met her years ago. She said that when she came to Passion and Purity, God told her that she needed to pursue geography. And she went and, 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 and got a career in geography. I'm telling you, God will order your steps. You're not here to try and figure out your life. You are here because God has a purpose on your life. And that purpose, God wants you to come into it. This young lady standing right here, she's not married to me by chance. God spoke directly to me and said, she is the wife that I have chosen for you. You can go choose somebody else. But let me tell you something, you better obey God. And so this is the God that we are talking about today. The one that orders your steps. And I know there are some of you here, you're ready to surrender your life to God. You've yes. never given your life to Jesus. Yes. You have never said yes to Jesus. But today is the day when you say, yes, Lord. I want you to put your hand up if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. And you're saying, yes, Lord, today is the day. I want the counselors to, to watch those hands. Glory to God. Yes, I see those hands. Is there anybody down there that you didn't come up yet, but you're saying today is the day I surrender to the love of God. I see that hand. Yes, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Those who are surrendering their lives to the Lord, please come. Yeah, just come forward to the front. There are also some girls, you know you are Christian, but you have been off track. You have backslidden from God. He's calling you back. I want you to come on this side. So those who are giving your I life to God, I want you to come on this side. Hand. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I felt that there are girls here that have been molested and raped. And, you know, as, as GT, who, who is the company GT Sounds that is sponsoring this event, he spoke of his daughter who went through a situation. And the Lord told him to tell her it's not her fault. If you were sexually molested, if you're raped, it's not your fault. Hallelujah. God wants to clean you up. Hallelujah. Clean you up from the thoughts that bug your mind, that plague your mind. If you didn't consent, as long as your heart is pure, you have your purity. Is Sister Karen gone? Hallelujah. Is she gone? My Lord, what an anointing. And the love of God. Hallelujah. We're going to pray right now. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Amen. We call you to follow Jesus. If your heart is pure, he will fill you up with himself. But today is a day to follow Jesus. Amen. All over this auditorium, put your hands up before the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands up. Father, I wanted to say after me, Lord... Thank you, Thank you for bringing me, for giving me to Merle Grove today. I stand before you and I'm saying to you, Lord, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from my sins. I want your plan for my life. And Lord, I give you permission to take over. I give you permission to fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me your passion. Give me your purity. Lord, I want to make my mark 
I want to make my of this generation. Of this generation. Come and live in me. Come and live in Rule me. in me. Take over. Take over. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands before the Lord Father in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see so many of our students would rather to be online, but these have braved, hallelujah, the times that they have come out and they are standing before you. Lord, I remember when I came to an altar as a young girl and you filled me up with yourself. Lord, I ask that you fill them up. Like the, hallelujah, with the, like the rushing of a mighty wind. Come on, open up your hearts. Begin to cry out, Jesus. Come on, call his name. Call Jesus. Jesus. Call Jesus. Jesus. For those that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. shall be delivered. Call Jesus. Jesus. Fill them up with hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, receive his love. Receive his love, counselors. Receive his love. Just before we go out for lunch, receive his love. Call him. Call his name. Hallelujah. Jesus. And for those who are battling hurts and offenses from sexual abuses, Lord, let your nails card hand reach down right now and heal them. We speak healing to you in the name of Jesus. Wash, Lord. Wash them, Jesus. Wash them, Lord. Wash them, Jesus. Come on, put your hand up and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just before the praise team do and song before we go out for lunch, let me say this to you guys. I don't care what they tell you, but nothing can change your life except Jesus. You see all of what the craziness that is happening around Jamaica? Until the love of God comes in your heart, you can never, you can never please God. And you can never find purpose. But today the love of God is here. Come on, lift up your hands all across the room and receive his love. Say, Lord, I receive your love. Hallelujah. Praise team. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive your love. In the name of Jesus. My trust in you. Just before you go for lunch, a couple of years ago, Karen was a student here, right? And she was at the first Passion and Purity. She ministered there and she is a worshiper. God wants to make you a worshiper. If you want to be a true worshiper, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask her to speak a word over you, to bless you. Weren't you blessed that she opened her mouth into experience true worship? Put your hands together and give God thanks for this awesome woman of God from right here at Mer Grove. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands. I decree and I declare that every prayer that you have spoken to Almighty God, it will be answered in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that after you leave this conference, your life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Put your hands together and make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to send you off for lunch. And you have 45 minutes for lunch because we're a little 50 minutes behind. So we want you to run and get your lunch. And trust me, we have an awesome, awesome afternoon for you. We have fashion show. We have drama. We have two more speakers. And we have a grand gospel concert. And we have some guests you'll be hearing from. But before you go for lunch, come on, take out your phones if you have it. Take out your phones. Yes. Make a selfie and, and share with your friends and tell them passion and purity, Merle Grove. And tell them something that God said to your heart. Come on, tell them one thing that God said to your heart as you go out for lunch. God bless you. It is a firm foundation. I will put Make sure you give your names to the counselors. Those, make sure your, your counselors have your card. There are two areas where you can get your lunches. Cook meal is by the canteen. Just follow this pathway straight. And then there's the other canteen here. As you quickly get your lunch, cook meal is available. And all other kinds of food that you like is here. Alone and I will not be sacred. Holy, there is no one life. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook 
Real Men is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nations. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpuritya at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nations. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. 
you may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nations. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed.
Passion and Purity's ebook, Healing Love, on Amazon Kindle. Yes, for only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and at a click, Healing Love will be available right at your fingertips. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes, Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpuritja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Is 
presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar, scroll down, awesome get access to the kindle edition at a cost of only 15 us dollars god inspired reading is super fun be inspired edified transformed and blessed Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, 
transformed and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed.
You can now get Passion Impurities ebook Healing Love on Amazon Kindle. Yes, for only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and at a click, Healing Love will be available right at your fingertips. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes, Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips.
Presenting Word Vibes Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting Word Vibes, Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, 
transformed and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting Word Vibes, Bread for the Nations. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed.
guess what? You can now get Passion Impurities ebook Healing Love on Amazon Kindle. Yes, for only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and at a click, Healing Love will be available right at your fingertips. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips. Presenting World Vibes, Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar. Scroll down. Awesome! Get access to the Kindle edition at, at a cost of only 15 US dollars. God inspired reading is super fun. Be inspired, edified, transformed, and blessed. Passion and Purity is pleased to inform all our men that our ebook, Real Men, is now available on Amazon Kindle at a cost of only 15 US dollars. To purchase, log on to Amazon, search Passion and Purity Jamaica Books, scroll down, and click Real Men will be available right at your fingertips.
Presenting Word Vibes, Bread for the Nation. An inspirational series filled with God's eternal plan, purpose, and perspective on life. Great for devotionals, sermons, sermon outlines, Bible studies, spiritual edification, and much more. You may order your hard copy at a cost of 1400 Jamaican dollars. Call 876-869-3311 or email us at passionandpurityja at gmail.com. Go digital. You may also purchase soft copies from our Amazon store. Just type Passion and Purity Jamaica in the Amazon search bar, scroll down, awesome get access to the kindle edition at a cost of only 15 us dollars god inspired reading is super fun be inspired edified transformed and blessed If you're still on the outside calling you back in, hallelujah, hallelujah. So at this time, we make welcome, high praises, high praises, take us into Another awesome time of praise and worship as we get ready to flow, as we get ready to flow. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, everybody. Lord. Come on, shout a hallelujah. 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 Join with us as we sing this song to the Lord. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord.
did not abandon, struck down but not destroyed. And let's be on a curse, for his promise will endure. His joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrows may last for, come on, joy comes in the morning. Oh, excess love 
Oh, can somebody just give the Lord a mighty shout of praise? Amen. We're going to work off that food that we just had. We're going to shout it off. We're going to get excited about God in this place. Can we give the Lord a mighty shout of praise? Another time, a little louder. Hallelujah. So we continue with our program. We want to remind you, though, that we have some book tables at the back there. We want you to go on over, check it out, all right? We want you to get a book or two that will help you in this walk with Christ. All right, so at this time, we are going to make welcome uh, Mr. Bruce Malone and the team. And there are a team of overseas presenters who are in Jamaica to do a school tour on science and the Bible. Science and the Bible. Pretty interesting stuff. I'm looking forward to hearing, to hearing this. Let's make him welcome. So, good afternoon. I have been in Jamaica for eight days, spoken to 2,000 students in 10 schools, uh, representing my team. What we are presenting is how you can know that you have a creator. Not just wonder about it, but absolutely know it like you know nothing else. Absolute assurance. Why? Why does it matter? Because we are all being trained that we are just animals. We're just a very intelligent animal. Now, you may say, I don't believe that. I know God made me. But you have to understand, you're being trained to think in a way, to act in a way, as if you're nothing but an animal. Even if you don't believe things about evolution and the Big Bang, they're in your textbooks, they're in the movies, they're on the internet, and you're being trained, everything came from an explosion. Explosions do not create order. You're being trained with every movie you watch. Whenever there's a man and a woman, somewhere in that movie, they end up in bed together. Almost every time. And if they don't, it's kind of weird. Why haven't they went to bed together? If I have a desire for somebody, why not do something pleasurable? and have sex with that man. That's what animals do. You're being trained to live and act and think as if you're an animal every time you watch these movies. You watch movies, science fiction movies, and Star Trek, and Star Wars, and Avengers. There's just aliens in all these movies. It's the idea that all over the universe, chemicals can come together and form life. And it, it'll slowly change and become intelligent, intelligent life. That's being trained that God has not done these things. You're being trained with your brain. Every time you hear millions and billions of years this, millions and billions of years that, that the rock layers filled with dead animals slowly formed as animals died in bloodshed and extinction and death. It's always been around. You'll hear it over and over again. Trained to think as if we're just the last animal that came out of the rocks. Whenever you hear those numbers and ages, and all of it is telling you God's word cannot be trusted. It does not mean what it says. What does God tell us? Four times in the very first chapter of the Bible, you are made in God's image. Is God the image of an ape? Is God the image of an animal? Animals can't help but follow their desires. For you to just have sex with anybody you think you have loved means you're just an animal. You don't have to obey God. God says that when a man and a woman are joined together, they become one. In the act of sex, part of us goes into the other one. It's, that is what happens. Jesus said, that marriage is like his relationship to the church. It is permanent. When a man and a wife come together, they become one. Now, it may seem really pleasurable for a while. It may feel really good, but I will guarantee you, 
it will not lead to fulfillment because it is not the way God has designed us. So how come so many people, so many societies, so many people just ignore God and act as if they're an animal? Because they're trained to do so. And don't believe it couldn't happen to you and your entire nation. Right now, God is acknowledged in your schools. But I'm going to end with a story. Only two generations ago, in the nation of England, 60% of everybody in the nation believed in God, believed they had a creator, read and knew their Bibles very well. That was two generations ago. My father flew in World War II, and I have children about your age. So only that long ago, 60% Christians in England, and they were a very moral people. Men and women who just had sex outside of marriage were considered deviant and sluts and not very good people, sinners, because that's what the Bible tells us. We're not animals. We are made in his image. Well, Hitler came to power in 1930 training his nation that they were the most evolved, the most advanced human being, and other people were less evolved. If they had black skin, they looked more like apes. If they were Jewish, they were not as intelligent, and they should be treated like animals. Evolution has always been the root of racism. One group of people are more intelligent, more smarter, look different than others because they have evolved more. Well, Hitler convinced the people, trained the young people for 10 years to believe this, and they started killing Jews, took over all of Europe, and England knew they were next. And the English knew they had to stop Hitler. So they sent 400,000 young men across Europe, and they lost every battle, battle after battle after battle, until all of those 400,000 soldiers were pushed against the ocean at Dunkirk, France. And they were surrounded by the Germans, and they knew they were about to die or be captured, and the war would have been over, and Hitler would have owned all of Europe. This was 1939. The King of England sent a message right on radio to the troops about to die. He said, Hitler is not after our land, he is after destroying the nation of England and what it stands for. And it stood for the belief in God and Christianity and truth and morality. Those, the commanders answered back with this great speech with three words. They wanted their wives, their loved ones, their sisters to hear one last message before they were captured or killed. Those three words were, but if not. Now that changed the history of the entire world because that message came from 2,500 years earlier when another dictator took over the known world. His name was Nebuchadnezzar and he captured the Jewish people. And he brought the youth in and he told the youth, you'll think what I tell you to think, you'll eat what I tell you to eat, you'll act the way I tell you to act, and when I put up a golden idol, you will stand and worship that idol as if it's me or be thrown into a fiery furnace. Those three men looked the most powerful dictator in the world in the eye, and they said, we will not bow down and worship your image because we serve a God capable of saving us from you. But if not, even if God doesn't save us, we still won't worship you. Now instantly, England is 60% Christian. They knew exactly what they were being told by three words. Those soldiers trusted God in a hopeless, impossible situation. And even if they died, they wouldn't give up. They would just fight for what they knew was right and true and real. And because of that message, all of these old people and people that weren't in the war, anybody who owned a sailboat or a barge or a pleasure boat, tens of thousands of little boats sailed across the English Channel and brought back two or four or six or ten soldiers, and they brought up almost all of those soldiers back, and hundreds of them died doing it. 
because they believed in the Bible and they believed God existed and they believed there was good and evil and that we're not just animals, we are people. That was England only two generations ago. Today, England has only 6% Christians or anyone who wants to have anything to do with the Bible. 60% to 6%. America, when I grew up, was 90% Christian. Today, there's less than 60% of people who want to go to church or talk about the Bible. And the youth coming out of our universities and colleges today, only one out of 10 will ever go to church. Because we're trained, evolution's a fact. The Big Bang's a fact. We're just an animal. Everything the Bible has to say about biology, geology, the age of creation, it's all wrong. So why believe it about anything else? And then we start to act more and more and more like animals. God has told us, as you think in your heart, so you will become. This is the central issue of how are you going to behave? Do you have this firm confidence, unshakable, absolute knowledge that God made you? If you do, you're going to want to know more about him. You're going to want to know how much he loves you. You're going to want to learn to obey him. Now, I'm out of time. When I go to the schools, I've written books. I hope to get into every school in Jamaica and do an hour-long science assembly to show you why these things you're learning can't be true. But there's a brochure in the back. It says, learn more about the wonders of God's creation. And it has a bunch of little QR codes that will take you to my website where I have a hundred different videos, most of them two and three minutes long, some of them 45 minutes long, showing the scientific evidence for creation and how evolution, cosmic evolution, the Big Bang, chemical evolution, chemicals coming alive, biological evolution, bacteria turning into fish and then turning into land animals and turning into monkeys and turning into us, it can't be true. But how do you know if you haven't seen the evidence? Grab one of these brochures and, and just get that absolute confidence the Bible is the truth. Thank you so much. Wow, that's great information. 60 to 6% in the UK and two generations, two generations and 90% under 60 in the US. We gotta pray, we gotta pray and we gotta put in the work. We gotta put in the work and we have to stand in the gap for our generation. Yes. Yes, all right. Thank you so much for that presentation. And at this time, we're going to make welcome to Shari, who will do the vote of thanks and do a presentation to you. Okay, Mr. Malone, on behalf of all the attendees here and Passion and Spirit, we just want to say thank you for that wealth of knowledge and just giving us the information, you know, regarding the influences that we are being faced with and just how to arm ourselves with the truth. So we just want to thank you again, and thank we hope you, you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Let's keep it moving. So at this, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise, yeah! All right, ready up. So at this time, we are going to have two choirs ministering to us. And the first will be we welcome to the stage as we have this segment, Chorus in Praise. Help me make welcome the host school's choir, Merle Grove High School, with every praise. To our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. 
hallelujah. Oh. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Take it high, oh. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah.
I could speak with the tongue of man and angel. But if I don't have love, I'm just as pang as symbol. I could have the faith to move the mountains. But if I don't have love, then I have nothing. about love when we talk about the definition of love we talk about God because while we were yet sinners he sent his son to die for us my God what a love an overwhelming pure unconditional love hallelujah thank you Westwood for that ministry in songs and at this time at this time 
we are going to make welcome Mr. David Hall, who is the chairman of the board. Let's cue up his profile as he comes on stage. Let's make him welcome as his profile is played for us. All right, Mr. Hall, you may come. Paul A. U. Lewis is the Acting General Secretary for the Student Christian Fellowship and Scripture Union, SCFSU. He has been employed for 10 years at SCFSU, which governs both ISCF at the high school level and UCC at the no, that's collegiate ministry at the local level. Paul Lewis is a graduate of the Calabar High School and went on to pursue his undergrad. And I know you're all here. Good afternoon, everyone. Amen, amen. I bring a greetings this afternoon on behalf of the Board of Management of Murgrove High School and um, also thank our administrative staff or acting principal or vice, acting vice principals, and all of our teachers and staff members, or ancillary staff or administrative staff, all our representatives who have totally put their support behind this effort. I mean, in a time that we are in, it is critical that we take a stand for Christ. Do you agree with me? I'm going to say it again. It is critical that we take a stand for Christ. And if you agree with me, lift your hands and clap and say, yes, we agree. Yes, yes, yes. The board of management, we are in, not in the operation of the school. Our role is to see to the proper administration in all respects and to let um, the ministry know how things are going. We are thankful that we are um, a, a body of persons who love the Lord, who know the Lord. And so I encourage all of you who are here today, if you're here from other schools, you're on the school boards, teachers, I want to encourage you that this is a day that we give thanks for. Because the theme that you have and the words passion and purity. As we take a stand in our schools, so many schools are going through so many different issues. Today we take a stand for God. The board, the management, staff, teachers, students, parents, past students. We today take a stand for God because we believe that God is in control. And so though, therefore we ask all of our students that you recognize God, passion, everything that you do, do it with passion, do it with excellence. Ask the Lord to bless you. We have seen so many excellent students coming out of our schools and we know that God will continue to bless. And purity. The word of God reminds us that there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But guess what? God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. The great part of it is that he says he what? Will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I want to greet you this afternoon. I want to say to you that God is God and that God is in control. And I encourage you, I encourage the um, persons who are leading this ministry and all of the musicians and all of the technicians and everyone 
as you continue. Don't give up. Don't give up. We are behind you. And so, Merle Grove High School students, staff, administrators, or leaders, we encourage you. We are behind you. And with God, all things are possible. God bless you. God bless you. so much, Mr. Ha. Oh, God bless you. That was a word, don't it? Not true. Wasn't that a word? Yes, and we're so encouraged. We are so encouraged to see that the board chairman loves God as a heart for God. Hallelujah. All right, so I want to hear some high praises going up. I, can we just stand to our feet? Where's the band? Where's the band? Where's the band? Let's stand to our feet. Who can sing? Come, I can't sing, you know. If I start singing, I know something to make them dance. Get them dancing. If I start singing, I run out of this place today. Which song you want? Which song you want dance to? Yeah, huh? Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Ready to dance? So as we're leading it. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Put on your dancing shoes. Keeps me safely through the pit. Sings and it is the Christ of Calvary. This will be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my head. Let's go. Blessed Jesus, hold my head. Oh, how I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power. Hear my plea, my people plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my head. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hold my head. Oh, how I need the every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power. Hear my plea, my people plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my head. Your turn. Bless. Do this land. Hear my plea, my feeble plea. 
healing prayer. I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. If you miss me, don't come searching. And if you don't find me, then you'll know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of an eye. If you miss me, don't come searching. Oh, and if you don't find me, you'll know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of the night. I love that man from Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has taken up my sin and let the Holy Ghost come in. I love him from Galilee, for he has done so very much for me. He has taken all my sin and let the Holy Ghost come in. I love that man, that man from Galilee. we make him welcome. Paul A. U. Lewis is the Acting General Secretary for the Student Christian Fellowship and Scripture Union, SCFSU. He has been employed for 10 years at SCFSU, which governs both ISCF at the high school level and UCCF, the collegiate ministry at the local level. Paul Lewis is a graduate of the Calabar High School and went on to pursue his undergraduate studies in psychology at the University of the West Indies, Mona, where he graduated with honors. While pursuing a degree, he also became involved with Campus Crusade for Christ Jamaica, after his university tenure, he went on to join the staff of Trempers Crusade for Christ Jamaica in 2009, where he served for three years. Four years ago, Paul completed a certificate in apologetics with the International Academy of Apologetics Evangelism and Human Rights based in Strasbourg, France. He currently writes for Press Service International, an Australian-based organization where he writes on apologetic-related issues. He was awarded in 2015, jointly with a fellow writer, the award for International Young Writer of the Year. Paul Lewis is a member of Christian Life Fellowship where he formerly served as Young Adult Leader, which included both a Young Adult Cell Group and a Young Adult Bible Study. Join me in welcoming Mr. Paul Lewis.
Pretty is. I just firstly would like to bring greetings on behalf of our organization, Students Christian Fellowship. That's an organization that provides oversight for ISCF and UCCF. Uh, on behalf of the chairman of the board and the rest of the board members, we just, want, we just want to say that it's such an excellent opportunity to continue to partner with passion and purity. You know, we both want the same thing. Uh, we have such a big heart for the students in our school. I've been involved in student ministry for approximately 13 years. And one of the reasons I've continued to be a part of student ministry, I mean, even being involved with my, my uh, youth, my youth cell at my, my church, my home church, Christian Life Fellowship. I mean, I see such potential in our young people. So for about a year and a half, I was living in Portmore a few years ago, and I had a garden. And one of the things that um, I appreciated about it is that I realized I like to see things grow. I like to see the process of growth. I realize that's one of the things I appreciate about student ministry. So even when I will read the letters that Paul writes to the churches, there's such a strong emphasis um, or a strong language in his letters about a mother interacting with children and father interacting with sons or daughters. So I appreciate that so much. And so it's such a blessing to be with you here. Beyond greetings, I wanted to share with you a bit. I was invited to speak, and I appreciate the invitation. Love Auntie Donnett um, and Uncle Andrew a lot. Um, we go way back. But I've been invited to share with you on um, this week, Love Week. And I wanted to share a bit of my testimony, but I wanted to incorporate a passage while sharing that testimony. So that passage is actually Mark chapter 10, verses 28 to 31. Very popular passage, but one I want to look on and I want to leave a thought with you. But before I get to that, I want you to just share a bit of my testimony. Now, before I go any further, let me just pray. Lord, I thank you for this time. Thank you for such an amazing day that it has been. Thank you for all these young ladies, all these teachers um, gathered here. I thank you for the teachers who uh, continue to provide supervision and guidance for these children, these students. And I pray, Lord, that whatever they have heard here today, that it will fall on good soil and bear much fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. So as I said, I wanted to... Uh, share my testimony, but let me read the passage of scripture first, go right into my testimony, and leave a thought with you that I think, uh, well, I hope will be a blessing for you, and I pray. So it's Mark chapter 10, verses 28 to 31. It says, Peter began to say to him, that's Jesus, see we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Now, before I go into a bit of the passage to leave those thoughts with you, let me share a bit of my background for you. Now, I always start off my testimony by telling persons I didn't grow up in the church. I say it because people will see me and the first assumption that they make is that I grew up in the church. Far from. My family and I, were, well, my family were in Rastafarianism for about 15 years. That's what I grew up in. Now, my parents came from, I mean, a fairly church background. I mean, the parents were attached to the Anglican church. So it, more of um, church by association. But that's what they knew. But the reality of it is they had questions like what many of you young people here will have. And in the midst of all of that, um, the, what they had before them, it wasn't answering those questions for them. But then also during their time period, there was a bit of some transitions culturally. Now, in the ninth, early 1930s, I believe, there was the Garvey movement or so. And what that led to was what much of us know today as Rastafarianism. 
So it would have started that way for a lot of them that were asking questions, recognizing a strong sense of identity, the who am I as a black man, so to speak, black woman, and then following on that question to ask then who should I, who should I understand God to be? And so some people extended that thought now to try and figure out, well, maybe it's not what I've understood it to be all these years, and my parents were one of them. And in that quest course of question, or the, quest, the, the journey of that questioning, they met up on Rastafarianism. Now, beyond all of that, what was coupled with that was the kind of household they had. For my dad, yes, he had a father that provided, surely, but he also had a father that was, I think, fairly typical of some fathers that time, and maybe even some today, that some of you may be acquainted with. Distant, though they may provide, rough, not very affectionate. And so after a certain time, my father was a bit alienated, distant, and cold towards him. And so he just went searching, and they were not the source of those questions when he was looking. And so he ended up with Rastafarianism. That's what we grew up. So my life was um, Ligani, where 12 tribes of Israel was for about a, quite, a, quite, a, quite a long time, at least in my early years. But he wasn't just asking about that. He had a question about, because in that same midst, in that same space, they had a question, um, well, who should I really understand Selassie to be? You see, for them, they said, well, Selassie is my Lord, he's the Savior. But my dad used to read a passage of scripture from Psalm where it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. And so I said, but if the my Lord is Selassie, then who is the Lord? And they couldn't answer the question. And so I said, well, this is a problem then. Quite the journey still continued. And while he was asking them, said, don't load it up. Because he was asking different persons in the headquarters. And he said, don't load it up. So I hold it down. And it came to a point where they said, you know, we will not relinquish his imperial majesty. And so my dad said to my mom, we need to move on. And we moved on along. Then after that, Franklin Graham came to Jamaica in 1999. This was Celebrate Jesus Crusade. Almost none of you were born. I'm quite sure the young people. Right? But this was a crusade in 1999. Celebrate Jesus, Franklin Graham. And my parents heard the gospel for the first time, and my dad turned to my mom and said, I'm going up. Do you want to come with me? And they both made a commitment to the Lord. Now, that was on their part. For us as children and my siblings, of course, we had our questions. My dad was radically saved because who he used to be is nothing but straight bad word in music chip. Bun weed, I used to tell people that my parents used to actually sell weed. People come out of the house probably 10 o'clock in the night to buy, right? So it was not, it, 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 was, it was a shift from that to them wasn't into that anymore. So we recognized that there are certain places who couldn't go anymore. We had questions. There are people who didn't come around very much anymore. There were friends who we never see very much anymore, right? There were people who we used to call auntie and uncle we didn't see anymore. And so some of these questions started popping up for us. So we made commitments there and after, but I still had questions. And one of the things that cemented my faith was when I was in high school, um, Calabar, went to Calabar, there was the ISCF and there was a president at the time who used to reach out to me. And at that point, I remember I was at uh, some meeting where we had for cadet, and they were smoking. And I turned around and I said, well, it's almost like time stood still. And I said, boy, this don't make much sense anymore. I factored in all of what I saw with my own family. And I said, boy, it's not making any sense anymore. And I made a decision to take my walk seriously. And I thank God for ISCF. Now, why do I make mention of the passage of the scripture, the passage from the start? I made mention of what my parents went through and the aunties and uncles we didn't see anymore. And I made mention of how ISCF and what that did for me. And I'm quite sure what passion and purity is for much of you. You see, the same passage of scripture, it's not unfamiliar to a lot of us. 
But there's a part of it that stood out to me quite some time ago. It mentions no one who has left house or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. Now note, it mentions also in this life but I also want to point out that the gospel does make the point that you're going to suffer loss. Some of you here know that very well as believers. I will mention a bit of what that looks like. But I also want to point out something that it mentions. Who will not receive in this time houses and brothers. Some of the same things them lose. For some of us here, we have suffered the loss of following Jesus. I may mention it in a little way. For some young people, you feel estranged from your parents because they're not believers. You're in a house where you're there, but you're not really there. And in some sense, in some way, you may suffer some loss. But according to this passage of scripture, they're inheriting mothers, sisters, and brothers. And I want to encourage us that some of us in here who are believers, they are meant to inherit us. They are meant to inherit us. You have some teachers in here. You have been a Christian for years, and I may be talking to some people in here, and you've never had the opportunity to have a child. You may lament that boy, I'm at a certain age, I'm not married yet, and I don't have children. But turn in your classroom, and you see that there are children that you are meant to inherit. There are children in your classroom that need a mother like you. There are teachers I know of, you know, there's a, there's a lady in here that I went point and she probably going to pinch me after. But you know many people like a winsome last and has mothered? She's a staff advisor, former staff advisor at Westwood High School. That lady has, has mothered countless young ladies. There's a, there's a chairman of our board and I've said to him every Father's Day I will wish him happy Father's Day. He may not have had biological children, but he's enough children in father. The, 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 the children that we see in here, some of them have, they, are, they don't have a father anymore because they died, probably had cancer, heart attack and all of that. They don't have a, child, a father anymore. Some of them legitimately have lost parents because they have become Christians. I know students in ISCF where... The father just kind of ease them one side because they can't relate to them anymore as a Christian. Who are they going to be mothered? They need people in this gathering right here who are teachers. But I also want to talk to the children, the students in here. Some of them need brothers and sisters. Some of them need brothers and sisters. When I was in ISCF, I knew students who used to share lunches with other students who don't have no food. Some of them who used to sleep and catch at another student's house because they can't go home. I remember in my earlier times as an ISCF staff worker, there was a student, um, he was admitted to KPH because he attempted suicide. Now, as a Christian, the stepfather called him every kind of name we know of that's derogatory, um, for being a homosexual. He was not, to the best of my knowledge, he was not gay. He was not a homosexual. But he was Christian, and in our Jamaican context, to be a male Christian is to be gay. Some of us know that. We, know, we, 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 are, we are aware of that. And so what he would face is abuse, physical, verbal, and he couldn't take it anymore to the point where he tried to commit, um, he attempted to commit suicide. And the person who stepped in to mother him or to provide a bed, to provide food, and started putting up so that he could go to university was somebody from him church. You get what I'm saying? So I came from a context, you know my testimony. I, yes, I had my parents and they're lovely parents, but I inherited more mothers and fathers. I never shot a mothers or fathers. So there are times when I needed counsel that sometimes my parents may not have had because maybe they didn't know it. I had people in the same body of Christ who I could turn to. 
I inherited, I never grew up with brothers, it's straight sisters, I have four sisters, but I inherited plenty brothers who are very much like brothers who I know for over 15 years and they are like biological, they'd, they'd almost be biological to me. So I encourage us, we are celebrating love week through passion and purity. What bigger love than what we see in this same passage where we move beyond some of these things, where we realize that, yes, people suffer loss because we're calling them to follow Jesus and that when they are part of the gospel, but some of the loss they gain back in this life through us and through the body of Christ. And so what that means for us, because we see a part of the passage where it says, inherit land and house. What that means is some of us may have to open up our homes to let people in. Amen? That is what it will look like. We have to regain a proper sense of what the gospel calls us to in hospitality. Where we may feel a way about letting people in our homes, but no, we have to fly the gate and let people in. Because that's what it means when people inherit us. So we can pray and definitely hope for the spread of the gospel. But this is what it looks like to do the gospel. Amen? So it's a challenge to our students here who are ISF as Passion and Purity members, but also some of our teachers here. Who are you called to inherit? Lord, I thank you for everyone here under the sound of my voice. Pray, Lord, that the words that have been spoken will fall on good soil and bear much fruit, a hundredfold, thousandfold, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen, amen. Thank you for that word of encouragement. So you may not have been brought up in a Christian home like many of us have, but guess what? The love of God can still reach you where you are because he came for every single person in humanity. Hallelujah. So at this time... Justine, I'm going to ask you, Justine Gabidon, to come and do the vote of thanks and make a presentation to Mr. Lewis. Good afternoon, Mr. Paul Lewis. I just want to thank you for taking the time out to come to us and speak to us young ladies, you know, as a man of God to share us how important it is to, you know, support each other and to have that support as Kingdom Ambassadors. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. Thank you again, Mr. Lewis. All right, so how many of you like fashion? Yes, yes, all right. So for all my fashionistas in here, we are now going to have a fashion show. Somebody say fashion show. Yes, because guess what? We can be Christians and still rock it. Bam. Bam, right? Yeah, man, we don't have to look boring because we're Christians. There's a way we can do it, right? Yes, yes, yes. So at this time, let's make welcome... Our fashionistas, let's make them welcome, let's make them welcome. you have been waiting for please help me welcome for your glory designs by Tashawn Riley
Gyra. You give me peace, you give me purpose, my provider. And when my enemies surround me, got me tied up. When they throw me in the pit inside the fire, you are my God and my King and my Father. Light to my path in the darkness, hope in my heart when they heartless falling. You reach out and call us. You're the lover of my soul, love is flawless. They don't understand my God is keeping me high. I know they go low. Cause me, I know, I know they solo. Cause my Gyra and I'm my party. Jesus is the new wave. Still drop, drop. Lord, I give you all the glory, glory, glory. And I give you all the honor, honor. Yeah. For everything that you do, that you do. Yeah. I'm a praise your name. Oh, I'm a praise your name. I'm flaming for you, love nah. This kind of favor, favor without no labor, nah, nah. You are my God, you are my everything Lord, I give you all the glory, glory, glory And I give you all the honor, honor yeah. For everything that you do, that you do yeah. I'm a praise on you By your grace that I'm covered, save gang, gang, gang to forever. Nah, nah. To over, you are my God and my owner. By your grace that I'm covered, save gang, gang, gang to forever. Nah, nah. Hey. I'm feeling, I'm feeling your fire burning my heart. Too. Don't need no extinguisher, I'm flaming for you, Lord. Nah. This kind of favor, favor without no labor. Nah, nah. You are my God, you are my everything. Lord, I give you. So beautiful, didn't know my life would be so beautiful with you. But every year, Jesus, you've been there for me, and you did burn my heart with everything. Boy, every day now forgive away. Baba say make a day happy, he make a 
School, how are you doing? So I am Tashawn Riley, and I am the lead designer of For Your Glory Design. And those were my pieces. And I just want to thank Merle Grove, Merle Grove High School for this opportunity. And you can find me at, on Instagram at For Your Glory Designs. Thank you. Awesome, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I think I need to go shopping, and I know where to go. All right, all right, so we're moving right along. At this time, we are going to make way for a drama presentation, which will be led by the Passion and Purity Drama Team. And this is entitled, The Gift. Let's make them welcome, let's make them welcome, let's make them welcome. Remember to check out the book tables at the back of the auditorium. Remember to take those selfies. Hashtag Girls Conference Passion and Purity. Can we project on the screen the Passion and Purity pages, the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the website so that our young ladies see all our handles?
worship this week. Yeah, I remember. But I can't believe I'm so excited. Like I just last week, me there, um, Gallivant and them something there. Me did in other world, out of them something there. But you see, after you minister to me, I feel so connected to God. Yeah, I remember God pointed you out to me and told me to pray for you. So I obeyed him and look at you now, excited about oh, God and things. Stop so it. <laughs> What's the extra? Girl, but unrelated. What do you think about Matthew? Matthew, I mean, he's. All right. You're not been praying for him, though? Well, that's not frightening me. Can I pray for everybody? Yeah, but this one feels different. If it's the same way I felt about you a few, a few months ago. Oh, so it must be serious. Yo, yo, mind them, ladies. We'll go on, we'll go on, we'll go on. We'll go on, we'll go on. We'll go on. Okay, hold it. So, much I read school so early. Don't worry about that man. Yeah, try to say. And someone like me can reach a school early. <laughs> Richard! Yo! Oh God, my friend. Oh God. You're good? Yeah, man. Thinks that today was your appointment. Boy, I try to make it out, you know, but you give me talk about sexual purity and them things there, you know. You know, some of like them talk there, some just move on. She sound like Nia. Them good got the same church, brother. <laughs> a tree, you know that. But you have to careful, you know, teacher. At the second time this now, and the record now look good. Well, don't worry about that. See, when the next girl forward, we're back on track. Right? <laughs> Nia? You know something I like church girl already. <laughs> so, you're afraid? I never even say I'm afraid, you know. Anyways, you know, sir, because they have this big God thing on the head, and when they talk, you make me think about my life. I'm a care mother. I try to live life. You know, Tyrone? Yeah, man, my big bro, that new girl every day, you see me? <laughs> so, is Nia, the next one. Yeah, man, I try to think, man. It's cool, no, man. What is Good morning, class. Matthew, you are here on time. Lord, the world must be ending today. Anyway, here's your test paper from the last math exam since you weren't here yesterday. Another bills, but man, you barely even come class. Brother, me tell you something much easy for me, but you don't want me to tell you, brother. I'll be giving you an assignment to do. Please complete it on your own. Richard, you know I'm looking at you. <laughs> Miss, and what kind of style is that? Anyway, get to work, everyone. Hey, Nia, you're looking extra beautiful today. Matthew, we have work to do. Let's just get to it. Speaking of work, I was thinking that you and I could work really well together. Matthew, I know you're not talking about this assignment, so I'll just ignore that. I have a question. Go ahead. What do you like about me the most? Is it the charm? the intelligence, or you can't choose. Matthew, Jesus loves you, and that's all that matters. Ah, uh, cool. I'm not really sure if I believe that, but we're still trying to see if we can. Ah, uh, never mind. Bye-bye. What a whole heap of sin to get rid of. How may I go do this? Why may I tell you? A little bad mind plus a little red eye Little teeth in plus a little tell lie Little sex while sin I hope you're working And by time you look you turn a little hell guy Sin not so much till sin multiply And I add to this sky as the time went by Sin plus sin equal more sin Sin plus the blood of Jesus will not equal to no sin If Jesus was his sin All right, everyone, please pass all the assignments to the front. Class is dismissed.
See you later, Ronnie. Bye, girl. Near, 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 near. Yeah. I can talk to you for a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, what do you mean by Jesus loves me? That's a great question. Um, it means to me that despite everything that I've done or will do, God's view of me never changes. So you're saying it's unconditional? Yeah, that's actually the perfect way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Well, during the pandemic, I went to an ICF meeting online, and the president said, no matter what you've ever done in your life, God's love towards you is unconditional. Although I've been down some rocky roads, that phrase stuck with me for some reason. I was at that meeting as well, and I do remember that. Um, you want to tell me what happened? All right. Well, one day, I was minding my own business, doing whatever I was doing, mm -hmm. and then some girl sent me some pictures. Mm -hmm. I never think of it as much at first. Turns out they were nude pictures. Oh. And I didn't know what to do with myself. I wanted to delete it, but I just couldn't. And then that just escalated into investigating online, pictures, then videos, end up that had sex with that same girl, but we'll come back face to face. And I just had an adrenaline rush, and I took off, so now I have appointments. Oh wow, that was, wow, I'm so sorry that happened. I mean, it's fine. Sometimes I wish that, uh, that my life was more than sex, I guess. Well, there actually is more to life than just sex. Have you heard about salvation? Yeah, but that sounds like a commitment and I don't really want to do that right now. Matthew, Jesus loves you. He says so in John 3, verses 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that includes you. Well, that doesn't sound too bad, I guess. Yeah, but God also wants something in return. What do you mean by? Obedience. You know, when you love God, you obey him. You don't run around and do worldly things. Matthew, Jesus loves you. But sin separates you from him. God is a God of justice, a God of peace, and he hates sin. And if you don't repent and ask for forgiveness and truly mean it, I'm sorry, but you're separated from him forever. Um, that's a lot. Can I get some time to think, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. Bye, Matthew. To God, or anyone else that may be listening, I admit it. I'm a player, a cheater, a manipulator, and I realize how evil that is. I mean, last week, yesterday, this morning, I was the guy with my shades and all, but no, I don't even know who I am anymore. All of those things that I ever did, I never felt bad about them. But it just feels like from this one conversation that all of it is vain. That all I've ever did was hurt people. And I realize that I really do need God. I realize that he's the only one that can help me. So God, if you're listening or if you want to hear from me, I'm sorry, and I ask that you forgive me. Lord, I need you, and I'm asking you to save me, please. We worship you, for I've tasted and seen your goodness, and I stood 
What a wonderful reminder that the love of God, as we have been hearing from morning, can reach you wherever you are, whatever state you are in. You're not a lost cause. And as we clear the stage and make way for the Passion and Purity dancers, I just want to insert, I just want to insert this as we continue talking about the love of God. Some of us, myself included, um, and we, we, we don't want it to go down the road of the mistakes and the hurt and the pain. In it hot bad. It hot bad. We are talking about you're so hurt and so stressed that you hear fallout in clumps, right? Your supervisor has to take you off front line because you're a mess. You're crying yourself to sleep. You can't eat. You're filled with so much depression. And if you're like me, you didn't get involved in sexual activities because you wanted to or you know um you loved it so much but because of that emptiness and that void and wanting to just feel loved and wanting to be validated you find yourself in some places you have no business being you find yourself with some people you have no business being involved with but oh the love of god this is a love that it's unconditional like we've been saying. It doesn't say I love you if, I love you but, I love you when. It just loves us just because, full stop. And so we don't need to go searching for love in the wrong places. We don't need to go looking for validation because we are enough in Jesus. We are complete in Jesus. He calls us royalty. He says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Say, so you see if nobody come and whisper in it, baby, you look good. Thank you, my no. Jesus, don't tell me that. Right? We don't need to be frightened and wait to feel special, you know, for somebody to tell us that. Because like I said, we know that we are enough in Jesus and he loves us just like that full stop him just love way all right so at this time let us make welcome as mentioned the passion and the purity dancers to the stage ministering to us God's love let's make them welcome
Lord, you're worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Yes, 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 he is worthy. God is worthy of it all. He is truly, truly worthy of it all. Hallelujah. So, as you may have recognized, no, that was not the Passion and Purity dancers. Those wonderful, talented young ladies were from the host school. Yes, we give God praise for them. All right, uh, I believe we should have it ready. We are going to play a recording. Uh, we'll hear at this time from Alicia, Mrs. Alicia Wedderburn Christie. Hello, Passion and Purity. I am Alicia Christie, one of the founders of the Passion and Purity movement. I am so excited to be talking to you all today. Many years ago, Donnett and I met in the music room at Wilmer's High School for Girls, and we just had a burden on our hearts for the young women and men in our community and the ones that we were entrusted with at Wilmer's. And we just felt this ultimate calling to help every young person that we knew to live out their bold, God-given passions and to embrace their purity. And that's absolutely what we did. And that movement exists today. I am so excited. I'm so proud of the work of Donnett and the team and all they've done over the years to ensure that young people like yourselves still have an opportunity to call on the name of Christ and to be bold in that conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord. I couldn't be more excited that this still exists today. And not only has it existed, but it's thriving. And you're here to reignite the love, the love for God, the love for your God-given passions, the love for being a pure emblem of Christ. And I'm so excited for all of you. My hope and my wish for you today is that you make the most of this opportunity and the most of this conference. I remember back when I was a teacher at Wilmers, and I was a student at Wilmers too at one point. And I just remember having uh, things like ISCF, uh, Inter-School uh, Christian Fellowship, if that's what it, it means. Um, I think I recall that's what it meant at the time. But it was just such a passionate movement for me and for um, people who, who wanted to live out their God-given passions like myself. And I'm just so thrilled that we still have a movement, we have a people, we have a nation, we have a leader in Donet and the team. Um, still doing this today. I'm so proud of you all. I'm sending you the best of wishes from here in the United States. And please know that my heart is forever with passion and purity. Have a wonderful conference. Have an amazing time. And I'm hoping to be there one of these times in person to meet you all. God bless you all. Bye. Yes, yes, that was Mrs. Alicia Wedderburn Christie. And at this time, for real, for real, for real, let us make welcome on stage the passion and the purity dancers ministering to us God's love. Let's make them welcome. Never talk about love. love in a town, yeah. You know what is real love? It's God love. Mama talk to my father. Yo. We pick ten coconut off of your tree. Yeah. And you make your sunlight shine for me. Yeah. And me a scuba dive in a you see. Yeah. But you never yet ask for money. money. Your sweet breeze cool me down daily. Your moonlight give me night recipe. You never charge for electricity. Me never ask but you do that for me. Love not have no gender, it is for everyone. Love not have no color, it not no division. Love need no multiply addition. Love no racist, no matter where you come from. God love. Love no keep party for dragonfly. Love no kiss seat then tell a lie. 
Love don't make your teeth from another guy. No. Love was there when the baby cried. Yeah. Love did a moan when my brother died. Yeah. Love no abuse, love satisfy. Yeah. This love, it a come from Adonai. Love no give up and never try. Love increase and multiply. Yeah. Love, I'm a friend, I'm a bonify. Yeah. If you want this love, lift your hands high. God love. Condition. Yes. One drop of love can fill the ocean. Love is a person, the great physician. Love leave the two nail printing on your hand. That's why me bold, bold like a lion, fast like a tiger, tough like a iron. We a got children from Mount Zion. God love, God love is everywhere. Feeling at the atmosphere. We pick ten coconut off of your tree And you make your sunlight shine for me And me a scuba diving at your sea But you never yet ask for money God's love, God's love is everywhere We feel it in the atmosphere Let's give them another round of applause And now can we give it up for God? Can we give it up for the love of God? Amen, amen, amen. All right, so at this time, we will make welcome on stage Mrs. Donnett Norman. But before she comes, can we have her L queued up, please, as she makes her way? Let's get, give it up for Pastor Donnett Mo Norman as she comes on stage. A woman of strength, passion, love, and dedication. These are authentic descriptors of the woman who will be sharing with us from the heart. Mrs. Donnett Audrey Norman. Her passion for the Lord and a life dedicated to his service has pulled together an interesting mix of experiences, like flowers that all together contribute to the beauty of a bouquet. Her love for children and the field of education answers to a large extent the reason for her persistence and success in training at the Michael University College, University of Technology, University of the West Indies, and the Jamaica Theological Seminary. She holds a master's degree in educational administration. This is now her 35th year of teaching at the Wilmers Girls School. She is also a part-time lecturer at the Jamaica Theological Seminary. Mrs. Norman is a trained guidance counselor, a marriage officer, board member of SCFCU, ISCF and UCCF, Interschool Christian Fellowship and the University and Colleges Christian Fellowship. She attributes all her accomplishments to God and is grateful for her Christian parents and her upbringing in the Church of God of Prophecy, Fraser St. Anne. She was ordained minister in 1997 at Bible Teachers International. As a visionary, Mrs. Norman and her husband are both founders of Passion and Purity and Marriage is Honorable which is a marriage and family outreach aspect of the Passion and Purity movement. Mrs. Norman is also the founder of Christian Teachers in Action and Christian Youth Leaders Mentoring and Training Program. Mrs. Norman, along with her husband, are joyful parents of two children, Malachi and Lisa. Everyone, please put your hands together and make welcome Mrs. Donnett Norman. This is probably the first time my profile has been read at a conference because even though I'm down to speak, but I am busy putting things into context. But the team has asked me this time to share 
And so I have a few minutes. If you are here, I'm going to encourage you to stay for the rest of the evening. We have an amazing concert coming up. And uh, we just want to just give the day to God. If you are here, I'm really, really grateful. Because coming from the pandemic, there are so many who said, who have gotten used to online, that they say, Miss, I'll watch it online. But you are here. Put your hands together for you. I'm really, really grateful for you. And I was wondering, would students come out? Because they're so comfortable on their phones. But you have made it. And we are here. We want to give um, honor to God, Chairman, Principal, Principal, Miss Francis, and all of you who are here. My husband, Andrew Norman. We are looking at love as a theme. And this love theme was launched at Westwood. Westwood students, put your hands together. I am so grateful because we had the conference at, Merle, at um, Westwood. We didn't get to do that book. Then the pandemic came. And we were wondering, when are we going to officially find a setting to launch that book? And thank God for Mrs. Ricketts. This is the book that we are launching, officially launching, Mrs. Francis. We are officially launching the the edition that was done at your conference at the Merle Grove High School Conference. Put your hands together. Now, for the Westwood girls, this is your edition, but it, it, it is so rich, and um, it has so much in it for you. So the thing is, every girl, every young lady, if you came with your school, there's someone who has sponsored a few copies for... Um, students who have come with your groups go through your teachers so you can access your copies um, compliment of compliments of a, a wonderful supporter of this movement who who said guess what this is an awesome gift for you if you came with your school talk to your teachers we'll get them you may say you have come with your youth group we will work it out but this is the Westwood edition of our passion and purity book at Merle Grove put your hands together again you know, and I, we were at the Manchester High Conference, and Mrs. Ricketts and her team, they were there. And my God, there was such a worship coming from that busload of students. That in the midst of all of that worship, God said, you have not, because we have, this is the second girls' conference we are having. The first was launched at Woolmans in 2008. We have had girls' conference on the school, on the church platform, but never on the school platform. And while we were there at Manchester High, in the middle of that worship, the Lord said, the next girls' conference that will be launched would be launched from Merle Grove. And what a blessing it is. And so I officially extend welcome to those who are watching online and those who will watch because these videos come to us courtesy of MTM TV, Love TV. They come to us every week and, so, and they come to us on our YouTube channel. Now, if you are here, take out your phones and subscribe to Passion and Purity. Subscribe to our channel. We will be cutting up all of these pieces and putting them on that channel so that the ones you miss, you can get. Now, I'm going to share with you briefly, briefly, I want you to listen briefly. God's love is amazing. He died so his love. Let me tell you something. We have all got it mixed up. Many of us have been trying to love and we are failing. God made a way through Jesus Christ where the love of God could be downloaded in your heart. When that love is downloaded in your heart at salvation, you have an innate ability to love. You can love even those who offend you. You can love even those who hurt you. If you choose to. God wants you to love by nature. How would you love to have a nature of love? That when you're plugged into the word of God, it flows. I'm telling you some things that has happened to me in my life. If I wasn't walking in the love of God, I could not forgive. I'm so glad that this morning session was impactful and I've been getting reports of girls who are coming forward to say, yes, I was abused. I can relate to the speakers. Because that is what we want at a conference. We want you to be able to relate to what is happening. Let me encourage you young people. Do not gamble with your soul. As was seen in the skit a while ago, let me say it again. Ladies and gentlemen, virginity is still in. Do you believe it? Virginity is still in. If you are here and you are a virgin, keep it. Keep it until you are married. 
That is God's will for you. If you have lost yours, God's will is that you be cleansed and made pure and kept pure. If you were raped or molested and your heart has forgiven the offender and you were not in agreement with it, God says you are pure. We have a generation of young people who are pure in their own eyes. Well, let me tell you very quickly four things that the Lord is causing you to look at relative to love. If there's one person that you cannot forgive, you really, really, truly don't love anybody. Because if the, uh, if the offender does you the same thing, you would be just as offended with them. So some of you came here today with all sorts of unforgiveness in your heart. Let it go. Daddy didn't take care of you. Let it go. You were raped or molested. Let it go. Your mommy isn't treating you right. Let it go. This is the conference where you come and you let it go. You're having, your, some of you, guess what? Unless you make it up in your mind that you are going to accept God's plan for your life, you automatically, you are rejecting his plans. You know, the Lord has been saying to us that we need to tell young people that God wants them to be active members of the church of Jesus Christ, of the church that Jesus died to birth. And so many young persons, they even go to ICF and Youth for Christ and Passion and Purity, but they have not had that commitment with God. When you are born of the Spirit of God, you become a member of His church. Jesus died for your sins, but He also died to make you a part of His church. Young people say church. Say church. You know, every time I mention church in some settings, some pe young people say, miss it boring. Miss a can't bother go. But God is inviting you to a community of believers. And if your heart is pure, if your heart is righteous, he will lead you from experience to experience to experience. I watched, I watched brokenness at the altar this morning. I watched some of you crying out. But passion and purity is about pointing you in the right direction. So you came to the conference. You gave your life to the Lord. You accept you were a backslider you turn your back on God no he called you back when you leave here we expect you to be grounded and to become a member of a church that you are growing in that you are exchanging your gifts hallelujah for, for wasted time and so young people we say get back to the Bible get back to the church coming from the pandemic I'm telling you so much some of you are drunk on Netflix some of you find God boring. Some of you are wondering, is anything in this God thing for me? Yes. Young people, I want you to say, a God me say. Come on, say it with life. Say, a God me say. But is that your reality? Because guess what? As I wrap up, let me say this. At 13 years old, I was walking at the National Arena outside of a big convention. And I heard when God was calling me. I heard him calling me. It was a big crowd, but yet I heard him calling me in my heart. And I went by the stadium pool, and I was the 103rd young person to be baptized in that stadium pool. I have a passion to see young people come to Jesus. I have a passion to see them saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we are not watching your face. You have come to passion and purity today, and, and God has commissioned us to bless this generation. My husband will tell you that many persons sometimes call you a generation of vipers. But you are not a generation of vipers. The Lord is blessing you. The Lord wants to bless you with salvation. He wants to bless you with salvation. And if you are here, you are not here by chance. Companies pay that you should get here. Put your hands together for Love 101. Put your hands together for GT Sounds. Put your hands together for Mark White. MTM. TBC. Brian Studio. Hallelujah. We have done everything to ensure that you are in a place. We, uh, by the way, I know Brian Studio for years coming to take the best photographs at Woolmer's graduation. That, that studio is just one of, one of the world's best. Put your hands together for them. And they are here. Now we are saying to you, young people, God loves you. 
God loves you. If you are here and you are not a Christian, this is one opportunity that we are giving you to come for prayer once more. If you are here and you are backslider, if you are a backslider, this is one more opportunity to come for prayer. Hallelujah. If you're here and you just don't know where you fit in life, counselors, get ready. We are calling you. We are calling you. As a matter of fact, I want for those who I call to come, come up. Start coming up. You're not a Christian. If you gave your life to Jesus this morning, that's okay. But you're not a Christian. God's calling you. Come. You're a weak Christian. Come. You don't know your purpose in life. Come. Hallelujah. Where is Andrew? I'm going to ask Genevieve to come right now. Come. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this right now. Counselors, come please. Hallelujah. Those who need prayer, come right now. We're going to pray for you and with you. And afterwards, there's a song because we want to, we want to just bless you. Young people are coming up. Put your hands together for them as they come. Why are you coming to the altar? You're coming to say, Jesus, I want you in my life. Come on, counselors. Get the cards at the back and come up. Hallelujah. We are grateful. Today is about you. You know, the, the other night we met here, and there was a young lady who is a counselor, who said, I met God at the Passion and Purity Woolmer's edition that was at Michael. And she talked about how God blessed her life at St. Catherine High. And so, young people, it's all about you. We're going into an awesome concert time, but it's all about you. Look me in my eye. I gave my heart to Jesus at 13. He came into my heart. Christianity is receiving the life of Christ. You will never find your purpose without him. And right now we have prayed. And the angels of the Lord are here. Close your eyes and lift up your hands in surrender to Jesus. I want you to picture Jesus coming to you to take away your sins. Hallelujah. Come and see. Come receive, come and live forever, life everlasting, he'll give you strength for told me to stop and call for one more person you really didn't hear the offer God is calling you for eternal life it's eternal life or eternal damnation the Lord told me last night that when I come to this conference to speak I should just say come come young people God is calling you come to Jesus come to eternal life Get up off your, out your seat and come to Jesus. Amen. Come to him. Some of you are getting some bad grades. Amen. You have some nasty attitude. You can't clean yourself. Come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says that we should command men everywhere to repent. We call you. Get up out of your seat and come to Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Take the living water.
call the name of Jesus. He is the name that demons tremble. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons are afraid of you right now. They can't be around you because God has sent angels to loose you. We command every demonic spirit to be silent in this place. Hallelujah. And we pray that your ears will be open to hear God. He's saying, come. If you are saying yes to the Lord, put your hand up. Yes, I see those hands. He's saying, I want your life. I want to find you. I'm finding you right now. One more time. Strength for today. Right now, by the blood of Jesus, young people say, I choose Christ. Say after me, I choose Christ. I choose Christ. Lord, Lord. I give you authority. I give you, I give you permission to strip away my plans, my ideas, and give me yours. Give me you, Lord. And everything else can wait. Hallelujah. It's not too late for you. It's not too late for you. By the blood of Jesus and by the authority of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We speak over your life and we call you into purpose. We call you into purpose. If you are surrendering your life to the Lord, put your hand up and the counselors will take your information. You see all of those hands. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to make one more call. I'm going to ask everybody in the building to walk up. There's walk up. Get up out of your seat and walk up. There's a song that is going to be sung right now. The Lord has told my husband, Andrew, you are not a generation of vipers. You're a generation that he wants. Come on, everybody. Everything that have breath, come up. Hallelujah. Clap your hands as you come up. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, only people. I see brokenness at the altar. I see some of you. Hallelujah. Your heart is still crying out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give your names to the counselors. If you've decided to make Jesus your heart. Jesus, give Jesus your heart. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to ask Andrew to pronounce a blessing on you. A blessing that opens the life gate for God to pull you in. And then we have a beautiful sister, Genevieve, who is going to sing a song over you. This generation, we are not, we are, we are blessed, but we can, avoid, we, can, we can not walk in that blessing by refusing Christ. That blessing is life in Christ. The curse is life in the devil forevermore. Amen. So I just acknowledge the fact that God is flooding your hearts with his love and you have to make that decision I'm holding to what God is giving to me today hallelujah and so I thank you father for those who are here whose hearts are opened whose ears are open to hear what you're saying to them right now you are the ones that the Lord brought here and his love is filling your heart. His words are pounding in your spiritual ears. He is speaking to you individually in a very personal way. Very personal way. Yes. And as he says what he says, trust that. That's all he's asking you to do. Trust what he speaks to you. Trust the love that you're feeling coming from him. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. And as you say yes to it, transformation happens. The love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ transforms you.
like he did to me at 15 years old. We are not promising you something that is impossible. This is not something that is made up by us. This is something that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for so that you can be empowered. You can be changed in such a way that will make you be able to please and honor God. Isn't that awesome? So just lift up your hands to heaven and say, Lord, change me right now. Lord, change me right so now. So that I can please you. So that I can please you. Hallelujah. That's what it's about. God bless you in Jesus' name. Just before you get the song, and I want you to pay attention to the song. The song was chosen for you. The Lord told us that this song must be sung over you. you. See what we do today? In a couple of years, many of you will be doing the same things traveling the world and preaching the gospel and calling young people and today would have been the day when he marked you we have been meeting and we have been praying in this hall we've been praying all across Jamaica and we said anybody who God sends he's talking to them he's blessing you and he's calling you into purpose somebody shout amen, amen. shout amen. amen the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the lord turn his face towards you and give you peace The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.
you know, I didn't know the logistics of this. But there's going to be an exchange of blessings, darn it. Because I want the staff members to come to the front. When I thought of this song, I thought of the staff. I thought of the adult fac facilitators. Mr. and Mrs. Norman, I thought of you guys being blessed by passion and purity. Because they have poured out your staff members your staff workers I really want them to come go, you go for them put them beside you because you are going to sing this blessing in their lives Amen. all the staff all the staff you. members where are you the parents who are here who have given their time I want them to come right beside you the teachers the teachers the teachers I'm talking are they here? Are they front? The yes. Let me hold. Children. Let me see their hands. Where Teachers, put your hands up. Yes. I want them at the front because Everybody I want the students to bless them. Whatever. I just want. I just want them. You can turn to the students. Turn to the students. Turn to them. Do I have everybody at the front? Staff, teachers, principals. Mr. and Mrs. Norman, I think I want you to go down there too, you know. Anybody who can lead the thing, because this is about passion.
Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and say amen. amen. The Lord is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless the Lord. Come on. Come on as you go back to your seats. Amen. Amen. Troy High School. They had to go back because it's three hours back so they left. But I met that group outside and trust me, when you come to a Passion and Beauty co conference as from as far as Westwood or the other schools, yeah. we appreciate you in a time when more young people are saying, we'll watch it online. You are here. And we pronounce a blessing on you. Amen. We are, we have, we're, we're, we're running uh, we, we're going to be asking you if you came with anything to give because Passion and Beauty is run by gifts. It's a non-profit. So if you have an offering, give it. We have a book table at the back. You can get the editions. If you are here from another school and you came with your staff advisor, as long as I get the, I get the numbers, we will give you a complimentary copy of this book. If you came by yourself as a youth leader, see me to, as a youth from another school or from a church, see me at the back afterwards. But right now, we're just going to be collecting whatever you can give, and then we're going to be going in our concert se section, session. But we have the JTA president with us, and we want to say welcome. Could you please come here and say a quick hi? I know you didn't expect this, but come and say a quick hi. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for her as she comes. Put your hands. It's always good when we have persons who, are, who have the nation's interest at heart. And while she's coming, um, I'm going to ask you, if you have a gift, just walk up, please. Um, the person should have been here stationed right now um, with these baskets. You just walk up and give as the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. Um, can we have a chorus quickly? Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises As we hear unto from God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Praises unto him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, Woo! all ye people. Keep the right on your feet. Let them on your feet. To be praised. When troubles in your life be praised. What do you do when troubles in your life be praised? Hallelujah. Troubles in your life, sing What do you do when troubles in your life, sing praise? Hallelujah. Oh, For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praise unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, Woo! all ye people. For he is to be great, to be great. I feel like running, running up and skipping, 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 and Come on, let me tell you, for oh, what he has done for me, he has set my spirit free. I feel like running, running up and skipping, skipping, and praise the Lord for oh, what he has done. Yes. 
To Reverend Ben McLean, one of our uh, one of our advisors, we are making him an honorary advisor. He has sponsored our camps. He's been there as a father, and he's a part of the Passion and Purity Committee. I mean, um, community, and we bless the Lord for him. Put your hands, come quickly, run up here, let them see you. One of our spiritual fathers who has come to spend the day with us. Lord, we bless this offering. Thank you for those who give, and we pray that you will be used for your work. Amen. Come, come, Amen. come, Brother Ben, Pastor Ben, come, they didn't see you, come. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. His wife was a master educator. She passed just a few weeks ago, but, and he's here, blessing the Lord. And now we have a, a brief greeting from our JTA president. It's good to have you. Pastors, Norman, greetings to you and the team here at Passion and Purity. Greetings, my colleagues. Greetings to the future of this nation. Young people, good, e good afternoon to you. I wonder if you're putting me in problems, you know, those two songs, last two songs, are they prophetic? I feel like pressing. Yes. <laughs> the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory, teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We are here this afternoon. Oh, you have been here for morning. I would certainly love to have joined you earlier, but my schedule will not have allowed me to. But it is my pleasure to join with you this afternoon, young people from across this nation. You are the future of this nation. All our hope is embodied in you. And if we have a generation that does not know their God, then the purpose, the mandate of this Jamaica land we love is under threat. But because you are here, we know that that is not under threat. Yes, that this nation under God will prosper. And we will continue to impact the entire human race. That is our mandate as a nation. Your theme is reigniting the love. The love of God. How rich and pure. How measureless. If you could ever fully understand the love of God, it casts it out of all fear. So you do not walk in fear. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The word says that God's love keep no records of wrong. There is nothing that you have done, can do, will do, can do that can keep you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus but not because you're aware of that Paul says again shall we continue in sin that grace may abound God forbid so because you're aware of the love of God it is not for us to take advantage of but I want you to remember that as you press on in this life, young ladies, young men, you are going to make your fair share of mistakes. But the perfect love of God, 
shed on Calvary's cross, demonstrated for us, is able to keep you and to restore you and to realign you and to bring you back in purpose because you all have a purpose and we need you to find that purpose so you may walk in it and make your contribution because this is my Jamaica. Say, this is my Jamaica. I must take it. Oh, no, no, sound like it is, this is your Jamaica, you know. Say, this is my Jamaica. I must take it. I must possess it. Or others will. Yes, and so it is very important for you to understand that it is no coincidence that you were born here in this Jamaica land of love. And you are women and young men of purpose who God has given the giftings and the skills and the solution to solve all of Jamaica's problems. The answers reside in you. You are God's solution to the problems in this nation. As you seek to live your lives with passion and purity in honor of God, he will so cause and propel you to walk in places and to go before kings and queens, but on continue to honor him and he will honor you. God loves you, young people. Never forget that. When the devil back you up in corner, tell him, say, God loves me. If you don't remember nothing else, tell him that God loves me. Yes? And be in position already sealed and signed. And you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'd love to present you with a copy of this book westwood edition love is the more excellent way indeed thank you. you thank you thank for coming you so to our much. conference it is my pleasure to all be here. right now ladies i want you and the gentlemen i want you to say the 25th of march say the 25th of march on the 25th of march we will be meeting with the young men we will have an event for them we don't have the details yet but we want when that comes out for you all of you to invite the young men. Don't you want some young men to be changed? Don't you want some young men who would be good husbands? Good fathers? Holy Ghost filled men? All right. So bear that date in mind. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Put your hands together. Do you feel reignited in the love of God? Amen. We have to grab Auntie Donet now because she will run off stage, right? Somebody, can we just give God some praise for Auntie Donet? Uh, so at this time, Jenny will come and say the vote of thanks to Auntie Donet and present her with her gifts. So Mrs. Donet Norman, um, one of the presidents and founders of Passion and Purity, uh, we would like to extend our thank you, our thanks, our gratitude to you for your word, your message that you shared with us. I know it was impactful to us as youth, helping us to um, use our gifts for the church. And I just hope that you will accept this gift of gratitude. Yeah. One more thing before I come on. Young people. And we realize that passion and beauty keeps going because it's a movement of the word in the hearts of our young people. And some of you come to the conference, but you are not connected. Every first Sunday, we have a special e-connection where we go through the word that God is pouring into passion and beauty. So we want you to subscribe to our channel and get in touch with us so you can be a part of that e-connection. Also, subscribe to our Passion and Purity um, YouTube channel so that every time we go around Jamaica, you can be a part of it. Also, God by Design has given us a parachurch church. We're 7 o'clock every Sunday morning. You can get some word before you go off to church or if you don't go to church, you can lay in your bed or you can get up and have the word of God being poured out to you. So we want you to subscribe to the Eternal Church 
of Jesus Christ, the record. Subscribe to that channel because that is one of the channels and that is one of the ways which we pour out from fresh perspectives from the apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists for these times. And you do not have to become a member of that church. You can be built up so that you can strengthen where you are. God bless you. Thank you for having me. God bless you, God bless you, Auntie Donnett. All right, so I know many of you, you've been blessed, you've been having a good time, you've been feeling the love of God, haven't you? Yeah. But make we talk to you, not for now, wait for the concert, don't it? Yeah. Say concert! Another time, concert! All right. So we are going to go into the concert just about now, but I'm going to call back Jenny to join me on stage because I want Jenny to announce our first minister in this segment. All right, say concert again. Another time. Awesome. So Jenny, I want for you to announce for us our first minister right here. All right, do your thing. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Johnny, and I'm from the Wilmers High School for Girls. And up next, we're gonna have Jody K. Jones, who will be performing for us. Let's make Jody K. welcome. Let's make Jody K. welcome. Lively up yourself. All right. visit the tables at the back books are there shirts can do better than that. Give the Lord a worship. Over here, so let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the middle, let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this side, let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everybody all over the place just give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be lifted up. From the rising of the sun to the going of the same, he is worthy. And we are here to declare him that he is Lord in every situation, in every circumstance, in every condition. He deserves to be magnified and exalted. If you love the Lord and he deserves your worship, just worship him in your own way. Don't wait for a song. Don't wait for another word. Just worship him in your own way. Yes, God. It is all for you. Ready, 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 you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the valley. Sometimes, that's where we find ourselves. Hey, he saw my needs, yeah. He saw my needs, yeah, yeah, yeah.
has been faithful. He has been so faithful. You know how I know he's been faithful? Take this school for example. I'm a past student of this school. I won't age myself. But I was a student here when Principal Ricketts was my business teacher. Miss Saunders at one point was my geography teacher. And so many other teachers. Teachers have come and gone since then. But God has still been faithful that this school still thrives. There are schools that struggle to make it back year after year. But this school still stands. You don't need to be a part of the Merle Grove High School community to celebrate for Merle Grove. Because it's not about Merle Grove. It's about the God that has kept Merle Grove. And wherever you are from, whatever high school you hail from, I'm sure it never started yesterday. It has been around through some storms and some trials and some scandals and some waves and conditions but God has been faithful hallelujah so we're gonna sing this song if not for your school for your parents if not for your parents for your education if not for your education for somebody that you know that you know that just because you're breathing now God is faithful Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, all my days, sing with me, man, have been held in your hands. yes, God, this is our prayer today, for the moment that I wake up. Until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. We're gonna do it one more time. Let's go. I love you, Lord, for your mercy. For your mercy never fails me. All my days, all my days, I've been held in your hands. Just think about how big He is. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my life, oh, my life, oh, my life, you have been great.
Cause I know joy is I know joy is coming Yes, joy is coming Somebody shout in this room Shout like you believe it Awesome reminder that it doesn't matter what you're going through No, it doesn't matter what it looks like No, joy is coming in the morning Hallelujah So we're gonna move right ahead with our next ministry but with me i have desi and jordan deputy head girl of moral growth ah yes yes all right and she is going to make welcome our next minister hallelujah let's praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and we're going to invite tiffany levy on stage now let us welcome her Good day, everyone. How are you doing? You doing good? How you feel? You feel good? All right, so before I start, wow, this stage. Auntie Danette, is, are you? All right, so this stage is not new to me. I've been on this platform when I was young, like your age, in my teenage years. And it was because of passion, passion and purity why I ended up going into the gospel ministry. And I remember I made my testimony in this ministry, transitioning in, um, after getting good opportunities in the secular and being obedient to the word of God to do gospel. And I'm still here today, still doing gospel. So that's how you know when it's God, right? All right. So I want you guys to hem with this song, all right? Somebody say, give a little. All right, so we're going to give a little more worship, all right? So I'm going to wake up a bit. Somebody say over here, say, yeah, 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 yeah. You say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over here, so let me see if you sound like when you eat this morning. Ready? Over here, so say, let me hear you say, yeah, 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 yeah. You say. Yeah, 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 All right, so that's how I never eat. All right. We're well, going to test it out again. Ready? Play the track for me now. All right, with the movers and groovers, them there. Hey. We don't want to boring people to remember, so we're young people right here, right? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. When Satan tries to control your mind, don't believe what he said is a lie. You got the Savior to break those powers over your life. Hey, hey, that's why you got to give a little, give a little, hey. Give a little more worship now. Give a little, give a little, give a little more. They got you grooving, they get you moving all the time. Hey, that's why you got to. Hey, yeah, yeah. More worship now. Give a little, give a little, give a little more. They got you grooving, they get you moving all the time. They've given you the authority to break money so that you can be free. You are above hell and not beneath. You're like a tree that is planted by stream. Oh, when it's blessing and its glory come down, Jesus can turn your situations around. So don't let your doubts make you can see. That you're stronger than your enemies. That's why you got your head to the to the more worship now. Give a little, give a little, give a little more. They get you grooving, moving, grooving all the time. At right, the part where you dance now, ready? Let me see who can dance right here, sir. Let's go, sir. All right, ready, ready. To the right, to the left, yeah. To the right, hey. This part is for you, ready? So when you fast and you pray And you see God every day Know your blessing and your favor There's no reason to complain You're the head, not the tail You were born not to fail One more time, let's go One, two, three So when you fast and you pray And you see God every day There's no your blessing and your favor No reason 
reason to complain You're the hen of the chill Born not to fail Hey, ready That's why you get to You get to You get to You get to They get you groovy What the, the beat, what the musicians are ready, ready, let's go Hey, hey We're gonna scan it all now, ready on who can scan Yeah That's right. Hey, hey, hey. They get you grooving, moving, grooving all the time. Hey, hey, hey. This way you give a little, give a little, just give a little, just give a little, yeah, just give a little. They get you grooving, moving, moving all the time. Ready? Repeat that for me. You get to give a little. Blessings before I go, all right? Now, this song, I wrote this song in a really tough time. Whenever I want something yet, talk it through. But no one is young, I know I can't think about the car yet, but I have to prophesy, right? Yeah, man. So, who oh, yourself feel like you don't want a car when you get a bit old? Hey, you can get a car in the early 20s, don't? Yeah. Who oh, say so no want a house? Because I know the parents sometimes they're tired of it. Yeah, all right. Who oh, ready for move out? <laughs> all right, ready? Let's go, let's go. So I'm going to want to know if help me with that one. I want to, you have to claim it, right? So if you don't see the whole set, you have to say claim it, right? Yeah. Ready? Let's go. If you don't see the holes, yeah. If you don't 
not see the money, yeah. If you not see the land, yeah. If you not see the job, yeah. If you not see the business, yeah. If you not see the school fee, yeah. If you not see scholarship, yeah. If you not see the alright, hey. When blessings over me, blessings will run over. When blessings over. Ship, yeah? Yeah, yeah. School fee, yeah? Yeah, yeah. business, yeah? Yeah, yeah. promotion, yeah? Yeah, yeah. steady healing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. deliverance, yeah? Yeah, yeah. if you don't see. For me, blessings over me, blessings will run over. Blessings, blessings, famous. Blessings, pants up our blessings. Tiffany, at this time we are going to make welcome the ministry of Chavelle Stewart. Let's make some noise for Chavelle. Let me everybody say Jesus. Yeah. God is good, don't it? God, good man. Somebody say, Jesus, sweetie, man. Jesus, sweetie, man. Oh, my gosh. God is good. Look at your friend and tell your friend that I love you. Yeah, man. So we have to love our friends enough to share God with them. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. If you know this one, you can sing it. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, open yourself now and say, in his arms. I feel protected, Lord, Lord, in his arms, never disconnected, in his arms, I, 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 I feel protected, there is no place, a semitone up for me, please, rather be, oh, Falling in love uh, with Jesus. Oh, 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 fall in love with Jesus. Oh, 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 oh falling in love with Jesus uh, is the best thing I've ever, ever done. 
reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day oh it will never And there's another one that I love. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now. You can play the track for me, please. Somebody say, God is good. So we're going to praise the Lord, say, hallelujah. So you know that there's something in the Bible that speaks about hearkening to the voice of the Lord. In Deuteronomy. And it speaks about us getting blessings after we hearken to the voice of the Lord. So let's see how best we can at all times hearken to the voice of the Just like that. It speaks about blessings, and it also speaks about curses. But there is one thing that it tells us to do. The Bible is strategic. It tells us that we must hearken to the voice of the Lord to be blessed. So what does this mean? If we don't hearken to the voice of God, there are some consequences as it relates to that. But right now, we're going to seek after righteousness. Everybody say, God, I am seeking after righteousness. So we're going to praise the Lord right now. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. This one you can sing it. Oh, praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all time. Sing, I vow to praise you through the good. 
lift up your hands and sing it. Oh, praise is what I do. I am I stand here today as a testimony because praising the Lord through good and bad it's not easy I'm telling you but listen I told you to tell your friend that you love them because I lost my best friend but at least I got the opportunity to share Christ with him so praise God in all that you do the good and the bad and one more thing, I did not teach myself to play this instrument. God taught me. So I must say to you, God is a teacher. So if there's something that you don't know, God can be your teacher. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it. for the ministry of Chevelle Stewart another time. You know, that song, Falling in Love with Jesus, just took me back to some places, you know. Let me just say this real quickly. Because I am not ashamed. <laughs> because guess why I'm not ashamed? Because who the sun sets free is free indeed, and there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That song, Falling in Love with Jesus, I fell in love with people I had no business falling in love with. Jesus was the one that I got right. And I'm telling you that many times through the tears I sing that song to Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done in his arms. I feel protected in his arms, never ever disconnected in his arms. I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no sweeter place to be but in the arms of Jesus, wrapped up in the love of Jesus. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Yeah, man, I don't shame for talk it. That I fell in love with people I had no business falling in love with. You could say that I went to Yamed University and I graduated at the top of the class. I graduated with honors. But 
glory be to Jesus. There is therefore, like I said, therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Today I'm a free woman and I am so in love with Jesus because he loved me first when I was a heart wretched mess. He loved me still when I was broken and I was messed up and I was dirty and everybody say it don't fear our father pastor but look upon our Jesus said come here his goodness ran after me his goodness got a hold of me and it realigned me and so I'm walking in purpose today that can be your testimony to glory to God Yeah, I love, love God. Sit with me. I love God. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So at this time, the moment so many have been waiting for. Calm down. Calm down. All right. So I know we came to see Jesus and Jesus has been in the house and we have encountered Jesus. But I know, you all, you all, you all, I know, because no phone will come to me, come ask me, now. when, 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 when? Well, now is the moment. Let us make welcome the ministry of Rhoda Isabella. Somebody give Jesus praise in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, let your praise match his greatness. Somebody let your praise. God, we bless you. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah, Murgrove. It's such an honor to be back here to just worship. All the believers in this in the house just just say yeah yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We're gonna just go up and we're gonna just lift up the name of Jesus with every breath that we have inside of us. Is that all right? I'll put you in front. Front of my melody, you are all that matters. Hey, you are all that matters. Sing it for yourself, say. I'll make room for two. Who? Lift it up in here, say. You are. Hey, you sound so good. You are all. One more time, say. I'll put you. I love the worship in here. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lift it up, sir. Oh, hey. Oh.
voices. I push you in front, say. Somebody let heaven hear you in you this place. Yes, sir. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You and I, Jesus. You are all, you are all, all the man. You are all One more time. faces in this building worshiping our great God anybody grateful that God lifted you up when you were flat on your face when you didn't know how you were gonna make it oh, oh, oh. Ah. I wonder if you know this one So I say thank you for being there. 
Thank you for being here. Everybody sing it. Say, thank you for being here. Lift it up in this room. Say, thank you for being here. Say, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. I should have lost my mind. Thank you for being here. Right throughout the pandemic. Thank you for being When they put school online. Thank you for being I didn't know how I was going to make it. Thank you for being here. 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 Hey, somebody rejoice right here. Somebody rejoice right here. Hey, God will never leave you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Say thank you for Thank you for being Hey thank you for Thank you for being Thank you for being Thank you for being Lift it up right here Thank you for being Somebody feel this praise Thank you Somebody lift this room Thank you for being Jesus you love me too Just give me a little room because it's about to go down in here. It's about to get a, a little bit rowdy. Ooh. So don't, don't pre me. Don't, don't, don't mind me. Don't judge me, my God, because I'm about to give God some undignified, some undignified praise. All the praise that you're shouting here. Hallelujah! Ah! Anybody? 
somebody have a wave rock? If you have something you need to just let off a worship in here. Hey! Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Holy Ghost and fire. As I travel to this field, Graham land, there is a friend who walks with me. Somebody say, He keeps. Safely to the same concern. It is the cry. You know who I'm talking about? You know him? Oh, God. me. Somebody over this side say this. This would be. To help me do anybody in the middle right here running, anybody over this side running and doing the best that you can. Touch yourself, stand for I need that. Throw your hands up. Say, Blessed Jesus. Say, Blessed Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. You say, you say. <laughs> Let's go. Put on your yeah. hey. Say keep Where in 
you want to come on. We're having a glorious yeah. time. Say we're going to a city where the moon I never shine. Tell somebody, say. May not know. May not know. May not tell. Others will be there. But my God, God himself will be alive to guide us on our way. Everybody sing it. Say. Abraham and Isaac. Ah. Philip and Elijah. Yes, sir. Step on. My brother took her. Say, hold fast and never let go. Somebody grip. No matter what the people of the world may say. Hold fast and never let go. One more time, say. Take a grip. My brother took her. Grip another grip. Hold fast and never let go. No matter. No matter what the people of the world may say. Hold tell fast somebody, and tell never somebody. let go. Take a grip. Take a grip. Another grip. Another grip. Everybody grip. Take a grip. Another grip. Grip, 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 grip. Take a grip. Another, another grip. Hey. Take a grip. Another grip. Grip, 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 grip. Another grip. Grip, 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 grip. Another grip. Grip, 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 grip. Don't let go. Don't lose focus. Don't stop praying. The Lord is nigh. Another grip. Another grip. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Will I buy your victory? Will I buy your victory? Will I buy? Everybody clap, yeah. Everybody clap, yeah. One more. Everybody clap, yeah. Say, oh. Sweaty and tea. Let's ask them, say, who you put your trust in? Who do you put your trust in? We have to declare some things in here. Because some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But touch yourself, touch yourself, say, I will remember the name of the Lord. 
We speak the name of the Lord over my group. We prophesy that in this name, every knee shall bow. Every ruler of darkness must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I say of the Lord that my my oh yeah oh yeah in him will I put declare it over your family say my trust say he's taking me daily say from glory to I see you security I see you in him will I trust take what you need Take what you need. Him will I trust. Hey, mama, my see a tire. Oh, so trust in chariot. Oh, God. Say, hey. My God. But I will remember. Thank you, Jesus. The name of my God. The Lord is in this place. He is a word. Yes, he is mine. Your part, your part, you say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your verse, say. He's my defender, my God, my shield. Anybody fighting and battling here? My hope is big. It can tell about you. Oh God, firmly on him. Somebody declare it. On mountains in valley. My God is before me. Yeah. Him will I. In my God I put my trust. In Jesus Christ alone. Say some trust in, some trust in chariots, some trust in, some horses. Trust in horses. Declare it over by 2023. Over the rest of the academic the year. My God. Every teacher, every student. Cause I'm fervently praying yeah. and resting in Him. This is why, because He has a track record of never failing. Hey. So in Him will I trust. Oh, one last time. Some trust in chariots, some trust in some horses. Some trust in horses. I, 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 I will remember the name of the name of my God. The name of my He is a warrior, and yes, he is. Yes, he is mine. Jesus. 
Jesus. Whoa. I just need you to sing it one more time in your spirit. Say, He never failed me. Everyone in this building, he say, never failed me. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never Somebody just received that. You are victorious because you are a child of a king. Hallelujah. And God has made you to receive all the riches and all the glory of his kingdom. And so I declare that no weapon that is formed against you shall ever prosper as you go out and as you come in. <laughs> The angels of the Lord yeah, Baba Sata, and gathered round about you in the name of Jesus. You shall not dash your feet against a stone, it shall not hurt you in the name of Jesus. We speak life in every sick spirit, we speak life in every sick body in the name of Jesus by the stripes of the Lord. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. We want to thank everyone who participated today. We just want to give God thanks for Merle Grove. So many singers have come out of Merle Grove that is blessing the body of Christ. And we call forth more in the name of Jesus. Somebody say more. Somebody shout hallelujah. If God has been good to you today, give him your highest praise. Hallelujah. What an awesome day it is. We're sending you home with the blessings of the Lord. Remember, if you came with your teachers, your teacher would um, collect your complimentary copy of the book. The Love is a More Excellent Way book. But if you came alone, I'll be right by the, ba the back um, for you to collect it. God has been good. Hasn't it been a wonderful day? Mrs. Ricketts, run up here. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, my God. When you go back to your church tomorrow... Go back with the fire of God in your heart. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. Holy Ghost fire. We speak a blessing upon you. That you will go back to your churches. You will go back to your schools. And you will light a fire in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask her to just, just greet you on the way out. And then we're going to have the benediction because it's a little bit past five. But we're nice up in here with Jesus and we're wrapping up. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
We have been reignited to love. We have been what? Reignited to love. I want to take this opportunity and say thank you so much, Pastor Donnett and Norma and Andrew, for choosing, for being obedient to God and choose Merle Grove High School to host this conference. Amen. Indeed, God is good. And I want to say thanks to all the schools and their teachers and their principals and all the speakers and everyone who came out today. God is amazing. The Lord bless you. So, so uh, um, Andrew is going to bless you on the way out. And the final activity for the day is the singing principal is going to sing us one song on her way out. By the way, uh. isn't it awesome? That you have principals like Miss Francis. Wasn't she awesome this morning? Principals like, like her who are preaching the word of God. And principals who are worshippers like Mrs. Ricketts. Oh my God. So um, go, um, remember to visit the, back, the book, at, book table at the back. And we want to thank GT's, GT, GT Sounds, Mark White, Michael Pennycook, um, um, TBC, MTM, Love TV, um, Love Pulse. I mean, eh, we had so many persons, Brian's Photo Studios, and everyone who made this a success. All the workers, Miss Jacqueline Hallelujah. Smith, oh my, Genevieve said, all the singers, God has been good. So he's going to pronounce the benediction, and then we are going to hear from our singing principal who will sing you on the way out. Amen. The thing I'm most excited about for you is that you are going to see the word of God manifest in your personal life and you're going to have your own personal testimony. Yes. That's what I'm most excited about for you. So it won't just be us up here telling you stuff. You will have your own personal experience and that's what I'm most excited about for you. So as you go now, I want you to know that that word of God that you heard, that is that God spoke to your heart, now you're going to get the opportunity to manifest love like never before. So don't be surprised if you get some people who treat you a little weird, so you get an opportunity to show them that love of God that's inside of you. Is that okay? Yes. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the faithful fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you from now until Jesus comes. Amen. Uh, put your hands together for the Passion and Beauty Band. Somebody WhatsApp me from all the way in Canada and say, where you get this band from? I said, it's the Passion and Purity Band. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. And actually, on TBC, somebody prophesied that this band, that God was going to give us, we purge the musicians and give us a sound. Whoa. Somebody say a sound. Sound. A sound. A sound. A sound that is coming out of Mergrove yes. as we cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Hallelujah. God bless you. Glory fill this place just for me with you. Come on, as we go, I just want you to sing the song to the Lord. The world will bow down and say you are God. Hey. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start. Oh, <laughs> 
bless you. Have a great evening, everyone. Go home safely. Remember to get your books. Those who didn't get t-shirts, get t-shirts and keep the fire as you go. God bless you. I love you girls. I love you.